Hello, everybody, and welcome back to, I believe, what we're, we're at episode 7 for Starfleet Adventures Cerberus Station. Um, no announcements for me on this side. Um, actually, that's a lie. Next Thursday, um, that would be August the 29th, we start our crossover episode with the Nighthawk, where as many folks from the Cerberus crew will show up and try to get Starfleet Intelligency, or vice versa. One or the other, we'll find out. Anyways, I believe we have a captain's log. Captain's log. Stardate 82550.3. Ever since our encounter with what Master Chief Embers dubbed the Space Squid and the Space Fish, our good doctor has been taking a shuttle out in search of the squid half of our space life with no luck. I can understand his fascination with the creature, but under the circumstances, we had to keep this station up and running rather than focusing on the to-seek-out-new-life portion of Starfleet's mission. In the meantime, I've decided that we should take some time to visit the first species we encountered in the Larsai Expanse, the Vatars, and try to expand our diplomatic relations with them further. They pointed us out to a couple of star systems that Lieutenant Sullivan Barnett has dubbed Alpha and Beta Second to try and give us something familiar to remember eh, where everything is in this new expanse. The planets in this system, called Doliv and Krelia, were the hardest hit whenever the Borg first em ah, good lord, when the Borg first emerged. So hopefully, visiting these sites can give us some clues to what has happened in this part of space, and if there are somehow any traces of the Borg that were missed. And log. All right. Uh, so you, this is going to be a ship-based adventure, and as it would be. You are all currently on the bridge of the USS Lunette, as it is powering through space. Um, you have left these uh, Starbase Cerberus in the c very capable uh, hands of Beta Shift Commander, um, Commander Jail. And he, assure you, he assures you that it will be as functional, if not more functional, upon your return. Now, all right. is there anything that you guys would like to take care of before or while on the ship i have one okay remember that uh thing we talked about uh mccall oh yes that one yes is it working or no oh i believe it is ever so slowly but yes cool then uh this entire time ember has literally been asleep at her station <laughs> or at least that's what it looks like Master Chief? Yes, Captain. Are you asleep? My eyes are closed, but no, I am not asleep, sir. Alrighty, then. Hmm. Uh, Ensign Mud proceed to plot a course towards the planets of... Oh, boy. I up so I don't mess up the names. Doliv and Krillia. And Mud is the supporting character, right? That's right. Yes. Yeah. Cool. So hopefully I doesn't, you know, cut anyone off when uh, Mud goes to make the course correction. The course correction has already been made. Mud just hmm. puzzles down, just says, aye, sir. Engage. All right. So you are so the the ah. So you come upon the system of Krillia, or the planet of Krillia. Um, I believe you called it uh, Secondus A. Was it the the star name? Um, sure. I put it as Alpha and Beta Second. Alpha. Basically, Just, yeah. Right. Alpha. Just updating my notes here. Okay, so this system is of particular interest to Lieutenant Sullivan Barnett. As it is a dark blue star, which is a v quite an old star. Um, it's a supergiant uh, star, which has devoured many of the planets that would have been in the original star's um, habitable zone. And as such, more of the um, outer planets okay. have been converted into new types of uh, star systems 
or not star system, planet systems. Uh, there are five planets left. Uh, the, f the closest one to the sun is a class H or a Mars type, a Mars planet. Uh, there's a class N, which is a planet that is currently undergoing geological cooling. Uh, there is the, uh, yeah, I suppose it could be classified class M, if it weren't tidal locked, which is the planet n noted on the star charts as Krillia. Uh, there's a class Y planet, the demon planet, and a class P at the very end, which is Pluto style. So it's very interesting to you that there are no other gas giants in this particular system. I guess on one hand, Marcus would figure that if they are like many gas giants, then they're some of the hot Jupiters, essentially, that have closer orbits to the star probably would have burned off long ago, given the age of the or given the relative age of the star. Um, then on top of that, um, so un uh, undoubtedly, most of those lighter materials may have congealed into this star system. Uh, it's an oddity, though, that there isn't at least some residual um, hydrogen and lighter elements that coalesced around another planet. So, of interest is the cr planet of Krillia. Now, as you approach, um, if the science officer could please make me... Or could please roll a scanning for information test. So, okay, would this be reason or insight uh, with my science? I believe, as we're seeing what's out there, this would be uh, insight science, uh, difficulty of one, and ship can assist with sensor What's science. the difficulty? Because we do have advanced sensor uh, suites. It would have been difficulty one, so it's now difficulty zero. Momentum, and I have a sensor operation focus. Right. The ship is going to read so that. <laughs> okay. So two moments. And I can actually use technical expertise to uh, re-roll one of my d20s as well. Excellent. Okay. I, I assume so you're going to re-roll the zero. Indeed. Let me just get that set here. Oh, okay. boy. Uh, so that's five momentum five from the momentum. first roll. Okay. Sure. Cool. <laughs> um, someone, someone could please I am never control. getting rid of technical expertise. It <laughs> is very handy. <laughs> it is so delightfully broken. Uh, okay. Um, you re So at first, you re as you uh, approach the planet, there's no moons, and... Your the ah, the sensor systems indicate several uh, satellites in orbit. At first, they might be seen as communication or inert, and then they start powering up and locking weapons onto the ship. Important question: What kind of weapons? Uh, disruptor cannons. So, like we're Captain... talking Klingon style. Klingon style, yes. Oh. Captain, we've got. To, uh, I'm reading multiple. Uh... Or multiple targeting locks on the ship. It seems that there uh, are uh, the defense, uh, the defensive grids of our friends appear to not see us as such. Huh. Did we communicate with the Vitars at all that we would be here in this system? That wasn't the plan, no. Oh, I thought that was. Whoops. <laughs> um... I'm going to see if we can send... Are we anywhere near, like, the Vitar's home planet? Uh, no. So, um, I really wish I could pull the map up for the stream just to show it, but it is a massive file and a lot to soak through. Um, these planets are on the closest edge of the former Vitar's Imperium to where the um, Starbase Cerberus is. Um, mm -hmm. Until... Uh, the Vitars Imperium itself is still reclaiming planets that have been lost to the Borg and have not yet made it this far. Okay. Yeah. Uh, without even prompting, um, I'd like to try something, McCall, and let okay. me know if this is reaching too far. Um, based on 
prior experience uh, with these systems, or at least having heard of them, um, I would like to try a sort of signal breaking or code breaking signal that would uh, more or less communicate the fact that, hey, we're friendly, don't shoot us. Okay. Um, this will be a, I would say, a. Hmm. My oh, thought man. was that maybe it could be a daring security Ooh, and then daring, a computer yes. security for the ship. I think that would be it. Yeah, that sounds right. Um, okay, I'm going to call this a difficulty of four because despite the weapon signatures looking Klingon, it's just not Klingon systems. It's the Vitar's weapons platforms. Yeah. Right, um, right. yeah. Could I I'll roll for the ship? Well, um, he, he did say he was doing it without prompting anyone. So in this case, only yeah, the ship this will is, assist. Yeah, this is only me. I'm going to spend three momentum for two dice. All right. Yep. And then would you give me ship or tactical systems as a focus? That's a bit of a stretch in this case, I think. We're trying right, to fair hack. Enough. So 4d20. Mm -hmm. All right, and, well, there's four successes already. And one from the ship, so you get one momentum back. Yep. Uh, you determined that... Our, you realize that despite the, the, the powerful weapons uh, signatures, that their computer system isn't quite up to snuff with what you, what you have learned in your time dealing with other militant races. And it's a quick, uh, quick hacking of their friend or foe protocol. And the, they still are, remain powered up, but they lose uh, targeting focus on you. They go into yep, active and that targeting. Entire, that entire time... Ember has still sort of sat there, leaned back in her chair, arms crossed, legs up on the console, not said a thing. Well, she says something after all that happens, says, I got you, Captain. It's already handled. Thank you, Master Chief. And basically, she hasn't moved at all this entire time. Nope. Oh, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so, the... Um, as you enter orbit, the planet below is, as I said, tidal locked to the blue giant. So the hemisphere facing the sun is pretty much a radiation blasted wasteland at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, with very thin atmosphere and high winds. Uh, the, around the prime meridian is um, actually quite hydrated. Uh, several distinct land masses are around. Um, no, nothing too high, so there's no like, no drastic mountains out out of the uh, ocean, but several islands, much of which appears to be Class M, and that only that only stretches for about a hundred kilometers before the other side of the planet becomes a frozen wasteland, where temperatures would dip to roughly negative two hundred degrees uh, Celsius. Mm -hmm. Which is, I believe, about minus 380 cell Fahrenheit. I'm just making up numbers. Hopefully, those are scientifically accurate. Um, you detect several life forms coming from one of the continents, but none others from the rest. Are the life signs that we're picking up, are they humanoid? Or are they... Uh, they would match the Vitar's bio signs that the doctor has entered into the computer all right hmm well i guess we might as well assemble an away team and see what how this planet has managed to revive itself to this even this capacity uh commander dorm will you lead the away team Yes, sir. Okay, so we are going to have an away team. Um, let me just pretend. Let me assemble tokens. Who's coming down on the away team? I'm leading it. I figured as much. Um, let's see. Let's get to the right sheet here. Um, uh, so, uh, uh, Yamato? 
Um, I, I'm thinking it, it could be I, I could bring Larsay down or I could bring uh, one of my two supporting characters down. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not sure yet. Okay. Um, Sullivan Barnett. Oh, I'm useful there. I'm useful. Uh, I'm more useful up here with ship sensors. Uh, I might leave this to be commander's discretion since. Uh, okay. Be better equipped to decide do they want a science officer for this particular away mission. All right. Yeah, yeah I think I think, I think it's important to have one. I, I think Larsa will stay on board the ship too just to just so she can keep an eye on the systems and such. Fair enough. Okay. Um let me know which character you wish to bring down and we'll say okay. that the, they were on the ship the whole time. Uh, Ember. Mm -hmm. So I guess the operative question here is anybody bringing a security supporting character? Because if so, I will bring Usha. If not, Ember will be going. Um, I, I can bring Hennis. That that'll definitely work. She she's more jag than proper security, but uh, she can. Uh, she she's she's definitely good in a fight. Sure, I'll bring Osha then, and since this is activating her, I'm going to give her a talent. All right. Um, in that case, uh, I'll bring Dora, just so we have extra security. Ooh, okay, cool. And so I get to activate okay. her again. And then update all tokens for that, because she was using her old name. Okay, um, so uh, we're bringing Ursa or Usha, I should say, and Dura. Okay. I believe that leaves us with Galen. Uh, yeah, Galen will go down. Okie dokie. And... Yeah, Barnett, if you want to come down as science, it's probably a good idea to have science. Mm -hmm. well, uh, science I officer. can certainly go if you want a science officer on the away team. Absolutely. Science is always important in Star Trek. Um, okay. So we have a team here. We have the team assembled. Anyone want to do anything before the transport? Team's I would right. like to... Uh, I would like to run a scan and try to uh, better assess the conditions, make sure that we are... Um, prepared. Down into a relatively safe zone, that there aren't any... Uh, residual sort of radiological damage or any impact from Borg weapons, okay. environmental toxins, what have you. Okay. Um, this will be another... Um, let's do reason science this time. Uh, ship can assist with sensor science. Uh, this would have been a difficulty two test, but with your advanced sensors, uh, difficulty one. I will, I will take my boosted sensors. Okay. Uh, what, what's the ship rolling? Uh, sensor science. Okay, one more. And one more technical more. expert. N naturally. Well, if you wish. I'm, I'm going to reserve judgment until I see what the ship roll is. Fair enough. Zero on that front. Okay, then. Yeah, that'll. It wouldn't hurt, so I will re-roll my zero. Yeah, so that will that'll give us three successes there. Okay, so two momentum. Uh, so based on what you're looking at in your data, the tidal lock actually is a fairly recent phenomenon geologically. Um, it has to do with the fact that the core is uh, cooling at a you know as fast as planetary cores can cool. Um, and it seems to be cooling in an unbalanced fashion, where slightly more gravity is towards the sun. Um, and you theorize it has something to do with the makeup of the planet's liquid core and the gravitational pull of the new supergiant. Well, not new supergiant. And, you know, science stuff. Yeah. Um, however, it is still ge geologically... It may be a geologically a new feature, but it's still 
at least 300, if not longer, years um, as the, ah, before it actually affected the planet. Um, so you do detect several uh, deep gouges taken out from various uh, parts of the planet um, that your computer very nicely reminds you is linked to Borg scouting activity of the Romulan neutral zone and other areas back when they first began scouting that area. Um, there's not any radiation on the planet. Um, th you, do de you do detect a significant um, amount of wireless network connectivity, though. Seems to be several, uh, for lack of a better term, cell phone towers have been erected around the whole of the planet and are controlling a lot of stuff, or a lot of automation, I should say. Does that answer what you were looking for? I kind of derailed myself yeah. there, but... There's a good bit of it. I'm just... Uh, it, like, I'm gathering from this, there's no residual harmful... Um, there's no residual harmful radiation or, say, chemical releases from when the Borg essentially scooped up entire metropolis... Uh, right. no. Cities, essentially, or settlements. Nope. Um, and no. no other signs of any... Nothing of the sort. No. Nothing of the sort. Um, all the um, signs of Borg excavation have uh, show signs of erosion over time. So nothing new. Yeah. Or I'd say that while they, you might not want to build a summer home there in the long run, or it, maybe more like a settlement of sorts, say, planet is... The planet is going to be a victim of deep time much sooner than others, let's just say. But in the here and now, I think that we uh, we should be okay to go down without uh, EVA suits or anything of the like. All environmental um, readings show that they are within the zone that we're looking at, within acceptable norms. That's good to hear. Uh, let's make sure that we have uh, Type 2s on us just to be safe. And let's go down and see who our cosmic neighbors are. Very well. <clears throat> All right. Uh, transport to the planet is without a hitch. I'm assuming you... Ch uh, where would you like to beam into? Um, it is a... Uh, it is a town of roughly... Uh, Twenty thousand, uh, a lot of a lot of outlying agriculture, and small amounts of fortifications um, from the outs. Or it's a very low-walled city. Hmm. Um. Well, the Vitalkers know who we are, so I'm not saying we should beam into the middle of town, but maybe somewhere outside of it. Well, that could, that's only if the Vatars communicated out this far that we were in the area. Oh, that's true. Yeah, let's... Um... Hmm. I'm saying out in the agricultural areas and do that, or try to send a communication down first. Uh... That may be viable, Captain. After all, the... Uh, from my readings, uh, the... There's considerable levels of automation down on the surface. It's, it's entirely possible that there's still a functioning comm system that we could interact with and let them know in advance. It might also behoove us to do so, sir, because, well, if they have automated planetary defenses and we're concerned yeah. about dealing with the Borg or another hostile power, I... I me in my evil genius mode kind of uh, wonders whether they wouldn't have an automated security system down on the planet and maybe we don't want to deal with that <laughs> maybe i was thinking along the same lines lieutenant okay so we're going to open hailing frequencies first is my understanding yes please uh, yeah okay let's go for it okay um, so you, he, um, ah. so the conversation, uh, you open hailing frequencies and it does appear that they respond, but it's audio only. Uh, 
uh, cr uh, female voice uh, speaks over the communications. We saw the defenses power up, then power down again. You're early. Uh, the tithe isn't for another few days. What's going on? Did she say a tithe? A tithe, yes. Um, we're not the ones who are here to collect a tithe, is it? More of, and excuse my lack of better language, is it the same species as you that come to collect this tithe? Of course, it is our pledge to the Vitaris Imperium's war efforts against the invaders. Hmm. Well, I can tell you we're not here through that, but we are here to talk with you. Uh, we'll be sending a team down, but try not to be alarmed by them. They're only here to talk. They're not here to hurt you. There's an audible pause as there is a voice that is only partially picked up by the communications uh, sensor or system. And they hushed whispers with a hand obviously over a microphone very well be warned that we are not used to outsiders so you may be treated very coolly but we shall if you if you come to visit we will share what we have of course and out of character i can can i safely assume by that by the invaders does she mean the borg that would be a based on what she said that would be a good bet okay i just whisper captain ask for landing coordinates oh <laughs> <laughs> um Excuse can you me. give us any landing coordinates if... of oh, course i have to open oh mm -hmm. i thought i would have to reopen a frequency but it's fine uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. You, are, you gave the, sorry. Uh, you receive the core. You receive the coordinates and a little bit of sensor of a wizardry point, and you realize that they're in the main the main gate to the uh, village, town, city, whatever. Whatever. Yes. Hmm. Okay. So, you all transport down to the surface. So the city itself is quite a lovely place to be, actually. Um, the city is a, a white-walled or gray-walled. Um, it appears to be some sort of granite-like, uh, granite and quartz, which has led to its fairly solid construction. Uh, several, uh, several small buildings are on the inside. Uh, they are uh, one to two stories, mostly square. Uh, except for this uh, large multi-story thing that w would remind most people of like a telescope observatory or perhaps more of a um, mosque or mausoleum style of structure, which hmm. is located right behind the main gates. As you beam down, the, you are met by an individual who is... Oops, I'm keep GMing, and one of these days I will learn my way around the keyboard shortcuts, but it's not today. Uh, you find yourself being met by two individuals on the... as well as several other farmer or generic tough guy of Vitars. Um, the security people will take note that, despite attempting to look tough, they don't. Um, at best, they are a moderately armed militia, there are no energy weapons. Uh, the only weapons that they possess are um, bladed weaponry or um, old style um, ah, old style firearms. Like basically like ballistic firearms, almost yep. like oh wow. Okay. Yeah, just you know, picture an old man with a shotgun, and that's sort of the what they got. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, the female uh, steps forward uh, after a little bit of uh, shock at how different you guys are from everyone else. Or, well, from the Vitars, I guess. 
Greetings, she says. I am the leader of this um, enclave, of this uh, colony. My name is Samalas. I'll step forward. Hello, I am Commander Dolrum. I am the first in command of the ship that is in orbit. And these are my crew members, and I introduce all of them and what they do. She nods, the and she gestures to a much taller individual in the back. Um, just for like a style of actor, if you remember how tall Mr. Hom was to everyone else, this is how tall this particular Vitars is. Hmm. Yes, and this is my ah, this is the um, colony's overseer. Uh, his name is Berg, and he nods. He nods silently and just keeps his hands clasped at his waist. Can I ask what brings a group of aliens to our planet and during such a um, trying conflict? Well, we are here for expo exploration. Uh, we have a station remotely nearby when it comes to space, and we're trying to get to know our neighbors, if you could say, uh, without a lack of uh, way of putting it. So you're saying there's a conflict? Uh, she uh, crunches up uh, her uh, eyebrows in, sur in surprise. Why, yes, the Vitars have been, the Vitars Imperium have been fighting the Borg for at least 75 years. Uh, they, I'm sure you've seen their damage upon our planet before. They were heroically driven off by our invade, by our massive military force. But, um. If I may interject, Samalis. Yes. Uh, out of character. How long have the Borg been gone? Uh, Borg have been gone now about thirty years. Um, the Borg have been. Excuse me. <laughs> Everyone, I must simply remind Prime Directive. Ah, yeah. I uh, second that. I mean, but. I mean, this is just out of character. Would telling them that the Borg have been gone for 30 years really be interfering with them? The fact that they are pre-warp and know about space does not mean that the first, uh, the Prime Directive doesn't apply here. Because this is like textbook Prime Directive where uh, telling them about such things is one thing. And... Oh, but it can like throw their culture out of balance and all that stuff. Correct, yes. Okay, that makes more sense, yeah. And then uh, Dura just kind of shuts up, <laughs> remembering that. I like to imagine that you all went into a football huddle with these people around you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Unfazed by the um, by the quick talking um, sidebar, Samalis uh, ah, Samalis waves her hand and gestures that you all enter the commune for what little food they can offer you. After all, we have to prepare for the tithe. It will, the Imperium will come in a couple days to take its due, which we will gladly give them. May I ask what the uh, tithe is? Oh yes, you're not aware, of course. Um, the Vitaris Imperium d um, requires a payment of food and bodies for the war effort. We have been harvesting what little of this planet is left to feed ourselves and also for the soldiers that are currently up there fighting the Borg, as well as several of our, as well as several of our <clears throat> ailing uh, individuals have volunteered to uh, head to the stars, where apparently their uh, minds can be downloaded and put into fresh bodies for the war effort. If they were left here, they would just simply die of old age or infirm or in other infirms. But up there, they can become heroes. And she, she um, sort of juts her chest out in um, uh, pride at the statement. I'm sure they appreciate your efforts. I, uh, I'd like to pull Dolrum aside, or at least make him linger a little bit back. Mm-hmm. I was going to as well. <laughs> uh, Commander, 
Mr. Galen is right and that the Prime Directive does apply here, but is it just me or have I heard this story before? I've heard of it in um, a lot of old tales, and I don't like the way that it usually ends up. Well, the this... Enterprise incident. Well, sir, one of the instances I was thinking of was uh, a uh, adventure of the famous Captain Kirk. But uh, long story short there, it turned out that Captain Kirk had to make a decision whether to break the Prime Directive and, quote unquote, save the people from someone abusing the tithe and taking advantage of their naivete or letting things proceed as they have been. I mean, we've only just met these people. It's hard to say, but which one are you leading towards, sir? Because I have a feeling that that's what it's going to come down to. I am not making a decision yet, but sometimes directives are meant to be broken. I see. Well, I will uh, be, of course, uh, discreet, but I am going to be running a continual sensor scan to further confirm the fact that the uh, the people here are pre-warp and thus uh, are definitely cemented under the Prime Directive. I agree. We should also send a transmission up to the captain so that he is aware of the situation down here. I can someone discreetly, if you would prefer. Let's keep everything as discreet as possible right now. At the very good, sir. We don't want to interrupt anything. Yeah, very good, sir. It will be done. And then Usha, you know, if she needs to, like, hide herself behind a wing or something, uh, starts, you know, scanning the area, making messages go back up to the ship about what they've found so far, et cetera, et cetera. All right. Uh, how would you like the messages to be received? Uh, voice or just text? Uh, just text. That way Usha doesn't actually have to say anything aloud. It is literally just text messages back up to the ship. Okay. Does Galen hear any of this? Um, I think Usha, because she's not Ember, would have tied Galen into this textual conversation, yes. Galen's going to have a very somber expression on his face, like a, it's like a sad smile. He's just going to lean towards Commander Delver and be like, They are not part of the Federation. We are not to interfere. Similar situation with what happened with the Klingons and their civil war. Awful. The best case scenario is to let this continue. Worst case, they find out, they rebel, they get exterminated. Plants taken from its resources. I don't think that will happen, but that is a thought that should stay present in your mind. I'm aware, Doctor, but thank you for the reminder. While all this is going on, Marcus would like to, uh, uh, we'll say, oblivious to what uh, the rest of the conversation and figuring this is a good chance to uh, make use of that anthropology work he'd done. Um, yeah. He might be talking a bit more with... Uh, or Berg in this okay. uh, case. All right. And what would he like to be talking to them about? Or shall we just role play it? I like role playing. Yeah, let, I I love role playing. As do I, because this is the time where we don't have to just talk, push science on one another. Yep, yep. <laughs> Definitely. Um, so, like with the uh, as far as the uh, as far as the Borg conflict, uh, the bodies for the war effort, I trust are conscripts essentially like soldiers every so often or willing volunteers would that be an accurate way to describe the situation yes that would be quite accurate um they volunteer uh they many of them have aged out of the physical labor pool and don't feel and don't f feel that they can contribute to our society anymore whereas there are several who have come down with um several um, debilitating uh, lung problems, which sadly happen if you're working too close to the um, uh, to the end of the zones. <clears throat> so, and um, th they volunteer their services once a year. The uh, Vitaris Imperium sends a ship and collects the volunteers. A war for a uh, war for you then is uh, well. 
forgive the phrasing, but it's an old man's game then, essentially. It is. Um, I've heard much talk about the ability to download our minds and put them in fresh bodies. And in ten years or so, yeah, should the should the Vitars Imperium still need my services, I look forward to joining them in a fresh body on the front lines. Excuse me? What did you just say? Is it a fresh body on the front lines? How? I'm not entirely sure of the process. All I know is what I've been told is that the Vitar is that our species has developed technology to download our minds into a new body. I'm just going to look at Barnett. Going to look back and raise an eyebrow. Perchance, uh, are these mechanical in nature, biosynthetic, or uh, photonic? I don't know how much uh, you've dealt with it. Uh, again, I understand if you haven't dealt with this too much, but this is just... My understand. Ver as the leader of the colony, I have to prepare everyone for what might happen. My understanding is that there is that once we are transferred into military service, our genetics are stored on a computer, and our our mind is downloaded into our into a computer. I believe they're called the Eternity Research Research Group that oversees this, and then a new a new younger body is created and our mind is downloaded into it it sounds like science fiction if you ask me but i've heard <sighs> great stories <laughs> this sounds like quite the uh group that uh, if they're indeed conducting the, if they're capable of conducting work either in organic memory transfer or um and cybernetics so that's pretty fascinating either way you look at it have you encountered any of these individuals yourself i am afraid that i have not i've been um i'm only uh i've only been ah, uh, i'm only 40 years old so i have not encountered i've not gone through the process myself however uh berg's father and she nods upward to where the looming presence of Berg is just sort of standing there with his etched face of disapproval. Uh, his father went through it and came back with one of the uh, future uh, recruitment drives. And he was much younger and quite satisfied with his new career. And which Berg said, yes, he was. And that's it. Was. Past tense. Is he still with us? Uh she shrugs. He's, uh, he came back for the recruitment drive and went back to the stars. We haven't seen him since, I'm afraid. Fascinating. When is this pickup supposed to occur? Apparently, uh, within a uh, two more, f with apparently only two more. Uh, well, I'd use the term day, but at the same time, there is no day night on this world. Uh, so I would, within roughly whatever timeline equates to about 48 hours. The translator microbes account for that and adjust uh, to our corresponding units of time. Mm -hmm. That's how Star Trek works. It, indeed. Don't sweat the small stuff, because that's what tricorders are for. Yep. Um, one in particular that... Uh, so I'd be wondering um, if, uh, of course, there are members of your uh, members among the volunteer pool that'd be willing to talk. Um, interested as someone who has some uh, histo uh, like a slight bit of a historical basis, and uh, my colleague here, Lieutenant Gatlin, is also just genuinely fascinated by this would there be a chance to maybe interview one of the volunteers she pauses for a second and she said yes i believe we could do something along those lines uh the volunteer feast isn't until this evening but i'm sure we could find some a fitting individual who has worked the fields his whole life and could be a valuable source of uh 
information on our, our society. Well, well, we're always happy for a cultural exchange. That's what the Federation's about. All right. Uh, anyone doing anything else while these two are having their chat? Um, Gura's going to walk up. Does Berg have one of those firearms? Uh, he does not, no. He is armed with a clipboard. Oh, I see. Um, a bureaucrat's weapon. <laughs> um, <laughs> handled correctly, it can be deadly. Yes, it can. Uh, Somalis. Uh, yes. Um, um, is there... I guess the words I'm trying to... A firing range. Your weaponry is fascinating compared to what we have and I'd actually love to test it out if you have the time to spare we have several um, there are there isn't much in the way of malicious wildlife left on this planet so we have very little to shoot uh, we do keep a small militia as you can see and she gestures to the uh, six individuals who now that they realize that you're not going to kill them immediately have taken several steps back and have a uh, whole shouldered their uh, long guns. If you'd like, I could have um, Berg here take you to one of them. And Berg just looks you up. Looks you pretty much in the eyes as you're about seven feet and so is he. This way. And he, st and he starts stomping away without even looking to see if you're following him. Hmm. Interesting. He speaks... And then she follows him. Somala stifles a small giggle. <laughs> yeah, um, Hennis will prob probably see if uh, there was like a, a sparring ring or something. I mean, it, they may they may focus on ranged combat, but close close quarters is probably still important. Not as much on this world. Um, they haven't seen actual combat in a long time. The only things that they have had to fight were a couple bears that wandered down from mountains from time to time. Um, uh, they, they look at you and go, well, not much we do for that. If you want physical activity, you could help. Uh, you can help stack uh, bales of wheat for the tithe. Hmm. Right. Well, maybe I could... Uh... Show show you some of what uh, we can do with uh, in terms of close combat, because uh, you need something for when you for when your opponents get too close for you for you to shoot them. There's a shrug and a couple farmers who think they can take on a uh, willowy girl with spots. Uh, step forward and then. That begins. I'm not going to bother rolling initiative and all that, but if you want to roll, say, uh, control plus security with a difficulty of two to see how much you teach them. Sure. Would it be daring security for him since he's doing hand to hand? I'm trying to figure out if this is going to be like actual sparring or him teaching. Um, if he's oh, teaching, maybe that'd then be. It would probably... I almost say that's present security. Yeah. How do you want to teach them? I guess. Do you actually want to go fists to face with well, them, or do you want to teach? Uh, yeah, yeah. I was gonna do uh, full full contact teaching. Okay. So this instead would be then daring security. And yeah, I will and I, post. And yeah, and rather than rather than fists, I would use well. Basically, I instead of using my regular sword, I'd use like a practice one, so Naturally. that my focus, so that my focus one could kick, focus could kick in, uh, my my mo my latest focus. Okay, uh, so then this will be an opposed test. Works for me. Daring security by a one d twenty with momentum. Focus of ancient troll swordsman, a sword fighting styles. I just lean over to who I'm next to him, going, "They don't know what they're going to get themselves into." Yeah. It's hard to say. 
Oh God. Wait. <laughs> oh my. Yeah. So one of them attempts a uses a uh, rake as a makeshift battle staff and trips himself up, falls on his face. Uh, the other one decides that going unarmed would be the better way of things. Uh, tries to charge you and gets walloped twice on the shoulders and once on the head and falls to the ground. Yeah. Well, okay, that's, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I wasn't expecting to, I, I, I guess, I guess you guys don't know too much about how to hit things up close. Uh, Samalis just smiles and shakes her head. No, we haven't had to use those in ever. We rely, for what little we have to do, we sh uh, fire from a distance and if all else fails, we hop in a hover car and gain altitude and then fire from there. <clears throat> Anyways, um, might I show you our control room where we can, where I can show you our entire farming system? I would love to see that. Excellent. And she brings, um, she'll bring whoever chooses to follow into a large control room. Uh, there is a two-dimensional schematic of the ring part of the planet that is habitable. Um, several of the land masses have names. And you see several uh, green icons darting to and fro, um, surrounded by large yellow um, areas of control. And the areas are all connected via red lines. This is what was left of the original infrastructure before it was destroyed by the Borg, we've turned it in, rather than controlling uh, weapons of old, we've turned it into controlling farming machines. Much of the agricultural process is automated. We're able to uh, use the ring of habitable pla uh, habitable <clears throat> sorry, habitable area on the planet to that could have potentially feed two million people. We have to be careful, of course. We're not. Uh, there's Occasional severe radiation windstorms, which could blanket an entire, uh, an entire island and kill the crops, so we have to be careful. But, and she's, we're quite pleased of how much we've been able to accomplish with so with so little. You do, you definitely do a vast amount of work here. How mm -hmm. long has this colony been here? We were founded. Um, let's. Let's see. Uh, we were founded about 200 years ago. We were, of course, a much larger um, colony at our peak. We had small um, we had small colonies all across this ring, and we had even had a small shipyard that could do uh, refueling. We even built a small frigate or two once in a while. And then the Borg came, and things changed. Interesting. Yeah, the Borg did a lot of damage across uh, the galaxy. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Uh, Galen, um, I'm assuming by now you've done at least a cursory medical tricorder scan? Yeah, and as uh, Dolvin spoke, I'm just side-eyeing him. <laughs> um, so you do recognize, or as you're scanning the individuals before you, they take a quick look at your scanning device and then just shrug and move back to their daily lives once they realize it's not going to kill them. Um, you are real or you compare uh, Samalis's bio scans with those that you took of the uh, Vitaris that had come aboard the station, and you do see that um, unlike the other Vitaris, um, her brain is entirely organic. There isn't the memory implant that you had recalled in the um, the Vitaris that you've studied previously. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I'll just uh, upload my information to the ship. Um, using the tricorder, I'm, I'm going to ping the ship. Like, how good the uh, transfer range? Like, uh, transfer frames? It's, it's, I'd say it's fairly... It's as good as can be. There's no... Uh, radio or radiation interference the ship now that there's no threat of the defenses firing on the ship there's it's easy enough to establish a solid solid interface okay good to know 
Mm-hmm. <clears throat> well, um, anything else about picking up? Are we picking up any nanites or anything like that from them? No, uh, they are completely 100% organic, except for one person in the corner who looks like he has had his knee replaced with a rather crude artificial one. Can I determine from the scans if that's uncomfortable? Um, he is... Uh, sorry, my throat's rather dry tonight. <clears throat> the move, uh, he is currently sitting down, but the occasional time, you do see that he is constantly making minute adjustments to the leg, uh, a sure sign of mild irritation and probably inflammation. It's not the best artificial replacement. Um, do, do, since they know that there are space faring creatures out there, mm -hmm. and it's just a minor procedure, would the Prime Directive prohibit me from inter interacting with them? Considering one of them has just beaten two with a sword, another's going to fire a long, you know... Well, that's, that's, that's engagement. I, I might be proposing surgery. I mean, it would really depend yeah. on the nature of the surgery. What's simple for you may not be simple for them. True. Hmm. Like, lot. for example, um, you know the Picard episode where he's like, I'm not a god, I can't control death, et cetera, et cetera, with the proto-Vulcans? Um, an arrow wound would have been fatal, but because of advanced technology, he was perfectly fine. There was no worry. Yeah. Alright, um... I'm I have a question for you. Yes? The, uh... The ships that come down here to take the tithe, do they sometimes perform any medical procedures on anyone here? They do not. Uh, we... S they come down, they take our tithe, and then they v head back to the stars. Oh, very well. Uh... Is there a chance I may see your medical procedures and histories? Just a glimpse of how you perform your own medicine to understand you better? Of course. Yeah. We have no... We have nothing to hide from potential new friends. <clears throat> and uh, she will uh, direct one of her associates to take you down to the... Um, I never came up with a name for this building. I'll just call it the command room or the command center uh, medical facility. Right. I'll go that way with you. Um, at this point, Captain, on board yes. the ship, um, Lieutenant Mud uh, is, uh, sir. Proximity sensors are picking up a vessel cr uh, entering the system at at warp. Are there any of the ship signatures familiar to us? Uh, unknown at the moment, sir. I will be able to give you a better estimate, a better scan once the ship has dropped out of warp. Oh, uh, well, once it drops out of warp, put it on screen. Of course, Captain. We will jump back to here. Okay, we are going to do... Okay, <clears throat> so dropping out of warp is this thing. No, I don't want to open a private browsing. There we go. Okay. And what is interesting about it, uh, two things. Um, sir, I'm not detecting any match in our database. It doesn't appear to share similarities to the existing Vitaris vessel that we have on our database. Um, any life signs on board the ship? Uh, several, sir. Um, I am detecting, and he taps his console, approximately 100 Vitars life signs, sir. Hmm. Uh, open a hailing frequency. <clears throat> ah, sorry. Oh, no, you're fine. I have, um, there appears to be a high-speed police chase 
doing laps around my house. The sirens just keep coming. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, uh, an individual appears who is... Where did that token go? Miscellaneous tars. This individual shows up on screen. Huh. You are an uh, <clears throat> unidentified vessel. You are in violation of the Vitars Imperium Sovereign Airspace, or territory. Please withdraw from this planet immediately, or we will be forced to defend ourselves and our, sp and our space. Um, we will gladly do so, but I'll reassure you in saying that we aren't here to do you any harm. We are here to d eh, establish diplomatic relations. We've actually talked with some of your people already. Um, what was the name of the captain? Uh, of his, the one. Th his name was the Charmal. Part. And were they called captain? I can't uh, remember. They, they took the. T uh, his official title was Curvet. Uh, we've talked with uh, Curvet Charmal. Do you know him? One moment, and uh, the screen goes blank for a few seconds. And then he pops on board. Uh, this, uh, just as you think he's given you the cold shoulder and has brushed you off completely, uh, the visual re uh, pops open again. Yes, we are familiar with Curvet Charmal. He has a very glorious uh, battle record against the great foe. If if you are f if he vouches for you, then you have mine as well. Of course. Yes. I am. You may call me. Curvet Balthier. Curvet Balthier. Okay. He looks extremely different from the other Vitars we've seen. Well, considering that he is in full armor. Yeah. yeah. Um, just judging from looking at the tokens, their ship's somewhat damaged or not really? Nope. Uh, it is a large ship. Uh, it appears okay. to be more of a freighter style than a warship. Although the large prow at the front indicates that it might be a some sort of a magnetic projectile launcher or something akin to a railgun perhaps huh, huh. <laughs> they use railgun huh <clears throat> I assume you're here to collect um I did some communication with the people on the surface that you're here to collect a tithe as they've said it is he makes a bit of a growly noise at the back of his throat. Yes, we are. Ah, yes, we are here to pick up what is the Imperium's due. Now, please stand aside, and so that we may perform our duty to the M to the Imperator. Of course. <clears throat> um, I. Mm. I'm not sure if I feel safe leaving them here and there on the planet while this happens. Uh, Commander Dol- uh, Crawford to Commander Dolrum. I'll excuse myself from, uh, uh, to over the side and answer my communication. This is Dolrum. We've encountered another Batar ship, uh, Curvet Balfier has apparently arrived as if I'm remembering correctly, the other retard said early for their tithe offering. Indeed, they were expecting them in two more days. Somalis is uh, overhearing this. Somalis's eyes go wide and she immediately starts barking orders for everyone to assemble. We'll stay down here, uh, to observe uh, the things that occur. But if we need, don't be uh, alarmed if we need to be alarmed, emergency beamed out. Um, in, no that ca in that case, let's beam up all no non-security related personnel. Leave uh, Galen behind, just in case people get hurt. I agree. I will send the communication to the party. 
Okay. At this, uh, Marcus would actually probably head Commander Dolrum's way. Strictly uh, is it strictly necessary if we're in peaceful conditions? I'd, I'd frankly, this there are several interesting levels of what's going on here, and my expertise might be more useful to you down here. If that is what you wish, Lieutenant, then I will communicate that back up to the captain. Because hmm. uh, what? Uh, I'm sorry. Barnett has stuff for like xenoanthropology and xenobiology, correct or no? I I I did not spec in the Burnham focus. I am not a xenoanthropologist, but okay. I do have I do have xenobotany though and archaeology, so related. Honestly, I'm borrowing from my debate focus to uh, try to assuage D er, Commander Dolrum in this case. You can judge how weak my case is. <laughs> uh, Crawford? Oh boy. It's actually not too bad of an idea. But uh, yeah, Crawford's going to order Barnett back to the ship. Uh, understood, sir. He's playing it safe in this circumstance. Uh, will you give me a few moments before beam out, Commander? Of course. Captain, sorry. Um, I'd like to walk over to Galen and see if I can get him alone for a moment. Uh, sure. Um, Ga you'll find Galen in the uh, medical bay where he is going through their textbooks and... Their science is pretty decent, um, being part of a technologically advanced Imperium, even though they've now been separated for a while. They do uh, still practice roughly 20th century levels of medicine. Uh, I'm, the... I'm doing a data thing if it's on screen, mm -hmm. where I'm going, I'm reading the data quickly. Okay. Um, the Vitars, who is with you, is actually quite amazed that you're able to absorb... Uh, information that quickly why um, how is it that you're able to read this quickly I'm not organic oh you certainly look um, as pale skinned as the others in your party or in your group if we were aboard the station I could alter my form but I am hard light construct fascinating that's I'm amazed um, and then he just he's literally speechless and doesn't know how to talk to a light bulb <laughs> at which point Barnett <laughs> at which point Barnett shows up and saves you from the or saves him from the awkward silence <laughs> Lieutenant uh, Doc Lieutenant so uh, finding anything particularly interesting with the there. Well, I'm looking at what fauna they have left and what procedures they've used to tolerate their medicine. Um, yeah. Trying to see if there's something that um, they might have overlooked. Just nothing to share, of course. It's uh, interesting I'm... to see their procedures and how one civilization, similar in humanoid stature, would have done things this way versus how humankind did things in the 20th century roughly you don't use leeches do you oh uh, leeches are actually very efficient at cleaning the bloodstream out of several of the waterborne uh, toxins that could be encountered upon if are if uh, absorbed through a cut skin Really fascinating. And he'll smile and look back at Barda like, see? That's what humans used to do, too. Uh, yeah. Uh, you'll forgive me if I, I prefer a. Uh, if I prefer whatever you have loaded up into that hypo and, uh, I don't know, a dermal regenerator. Um, Are you okay? Personal preference. 
yeah um well i at least am being called back up to the ship and i'm none too clear just yet but i'm just we might have to save this till later but i am interested to see what you uh, what you can gather from what i can imagine is the uh a baseline idea of what we have between types of vitars now this this might be the most promising lead we've had in or we've had since we've started this little side project of ours yes and i'm curious to see how it is done i well, do hope it's more than just a memory housing but possible ideas well, and why do you need a thermal regenerator though well i mean if you get it, like if you get cut and you get a waterborne pathogen then you know you want the hypo to kill everything that's in there and then you seal it up with the dermal regenerator that's that's just my thinking on that case i am fine right now though i don't need any leeches i don't need any medical equipment i am good i just uh well keep me up to date on what you see i guess very well and with that marcus will back off uh, sullivan barnett to um to lunette lunette here go ahead uh one to beam up acknowledged energizing and with that barnett beams up and i disappear into a curtain of light in front of this uh in front of the farmer that he was with uh the farmer just looks uh. at, at gail and goes was he made of light too? Did he just turn off? Um, <laughs> good question. Let's ask that again later. <laughs> Inoculation. <laughs> Knock him out. Sleep time for you. You didn't see anything. <laughs> go to sleep, go to sleep, go to sleep. <laughs> They're asking too many questions. Sanitize, <laughs> uh, yeah. sanitize the planet. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, Usha, um, are, are you sticking around, heading back up? Um, unless my scans have shown that they're relying on Borg technology to do what they're doing, which nope. I haven't heard anything that would indicate that. Yeah, she'd probably go back up to the ship. Okay. Okay, so if I am correct in my listening as a GM, and I sometimes am, uh, the four, uh, so Dorum, Galen, Dura, and Ebak are staying on world? Yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. <clears throat> Just organize folks here. Okay, so standing down, or not standing down, landing. Um, the entire ship that was in orbit uh, begins landing um, itself on powerful retro thrusters to break through the uh, thinnish atmosphere and land in a series of um, already uh, cleared out crops for its arrival. Mm. Um, one of the Vitaris in full armor steps steps down. Um, I believe that the captain would have at least meant, passed down Curvet Balthier's name. And, oh yeah, he definitely would have. Yeah. Uh, with him are several other Vitaris in similar armor. Next up, um, there come uh, two other individuals. Uh, male and female. Okay. <clears throat> um, Samalas uh, heads straight to uh, Curvet Balthier. Uh, bangs her pectoral twice with her um, with her fist in a form of salute uh, and 
Curvet, we once again are prepared to offer our Krillia's tithe to the Vitaris Imperium's uh, ongoing conflict against the uh, savage Borg invaders. Curvet just stands rather motionless, uh, surveys the uh, crates of food and several of the individuals who are uh, being assisted onto the ship. Most of them are roughly about 60 and if they had to be equated to human terms. And there are several other individuals who are missing limbs, who don't look all that healthy, or um, who just... And there's a few who are, seem perfectly uh, um, physically capable, but they're going on, on board anyways. Uh, the two um, Vitars that are unhelmed are offering them words of encouragement and support and assuring them that they're doing the right thing for the Vitars. Uh, the four uh, armored security individuals are sort of placing themselves between uh, you Starfleet officers and the ongoing tithe procedure, which appears to be almost as much ritual as it is um, ah, ritual as it is just loading stuff onto crates or loading crates onto the ship. Um, certain not dances per se, but motions that have been traditionalized, ways of speaking, um, and just um, how the volunteers are um, being treated by their other, um, ah, by their other Vitars, ah, by the other Vitars on the ship, to the ship, if I can, if that makes any sense. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, um, as Yep. Dora's yep. observing this. Mm -hmm. um, do any of the Vitars that are being loaded onto the ship look like they're going there unwillingly, out of curiosity? Uh, this would be an insight security with a difficulty of two. Okay. And if you have anything like pattern recognition or uh, crowd reading or... The uh, closest thing I have is, like, coordination, but that's pretty much yeah, a stretch. That's, so, no, that would yeah. do it. Yeah, that's fine. Um, and you said difficulty two. Difficulty two. Uh, I'll buy a third die with momentum just to see. Okay. So. Well, that's one momentum. Okay. Uh, three successes. Cool. Mm. There is a. You get a sense of urgency coming from all of the movements. Um, people are being hurried onto the ship. Uh, food is being not haphazardly thrown, but you do sense a pressing need to get this done um, mm -hmm. setting. Um, it doesn't appear that any of the Vitars are unwilling, and indeed the um, unarmored Vitars are uh, quite happy to be here. Um, one of them see, one of them recognizes a face in the crowd, smiles and waves um, before going back to their duties. Mm -hmm. uh, doctor, your but, oh, sorry. If with you're that not... information, oh no, it's fine. Yeah. Um, probably Dolroman noticed this. She's not doing anything, but she very visibly is kind of like running her thumb along her phaser in a way that tells you it's like she doesn't think this is right. Um, Mr. Galen, um, yes. what are you doing during all this? Scanning. Of course you are. Then I would like an insight medical, please. Difficulty of three. Uh, okay. My name, uh, anatomy, uh, biology. Uh, if you have exobiology, that would be one of them. Ooh. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> uh, anatomy as well, or cybernetics? Uh, cybernetics would also work. I'm going to activate cybernetics, and I will put toxicology on the wayside for now. Okay. Uh, difficulty three, you said? Yep, difficulty three. Insight medicine. I get 
happy days. Yay. Yeah. Well, oh, nice. There's your three successes. Cool. Uh, Doing the same song that Data did in Generations. Scanning for life forms. Yes. Yeah. Oh, great. <laughs> a, a classic for the ages. Life forms. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. Okay. Uh, um, um, so what you're able to determine, Galen, is that the Vitars that have come down with the ship and are assisting the others um, are uh, have that memory implant inside their brains. Um, so, and they uh, they would have a data port uh, located uh, roughly at the base of their neck where their spine might, where their spine joins their shoulder blade. Um, What's interesting for you is that at first glance you are receiving life forms readings from the armored individuals that match Vitars. Uh, however, they are exactly the same life signs. Like each one is each one has the exact same pulse, uh, the exact same body temperature, um, the and projecting the exact same vital signs. How much of the cargo is loaded up? Uh, at this stage, it would be roughly 75%. I'm going to go I'm gonna step forward. I'm going to go to Dalrum first. <laughs> okay. Dalrum goes to step forward, but Galen steps in his way. There. Yes. This is a scan of one of the gentlemen in armor. This is another scan of another gentleman in armor. How good is your medicine? My medicine's a, a one. My science is a two. So, I hope you studied your classes. But that's impossible. Even with clones? Yes. Even with clones. Interesting. I know you're going to hate this. Hmm? I know you're going to hate what I'm going to do next. Oh, I have something that you might hate as well. But I think what? it would be interesting. Oh. My armband in one of the containers. I'm curious. Ooh, interesting. I was also thinking of um, approaching them, see if I could see inside for cultural reasons, and dropping my comm badge in there to track it. Oh. Aren't we two devious individuals? <laughs> Do you want to go in there? Would be breaking the prime directive. But... As I've said before, some directives are meant to be broken sometimes. The difference between me and you is you can be drummed out of Starfleet. I can be decompiled. I'll protect you, you protect me? How about I just protect you? I'll go in. Alright, we'll have to come up with some excuse why you're no longer here, but we'll we'll figure out something. I'm just an armband, technically, right now. And I can hear Ember just screaming at me if I tell her this. <laughs> I'm just going to click my armband and uh, hold my arm out towards the Dolrum and deactivate, and the ring starting to drop. I grab it as it falls, and then I start walking forward towards the party. Uh, which party? Because right now there's about three of them. The... Towards the two individuals from the ship uh, to see if I can ask to go in for to see uh, how everything ah, is so working. Ah, so the, the white-bordered, friendly Vitars. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> sure. Um, they identify themselves as Drex and Malal. And they are more than happy to uh, escort you two on board. Uh, security folks, what are you guys doing? Um... Henna uh, is uh, she's studiously ignoring the uh, potential PD violation because uh, she's she's the practical type. Yes, and she's also observing the proto. Uh, she's observing how how this goes. It's known as establishing. Sometimes observation is needed to establish like. Base measurement baselines mm -hmm. for if they encounter for if 
these situations are encountered again just to you know sort of remembering uh, remembering how it works she's the legal type right so le- legal legal matters ceremonial matters got that okay uh dura um uh she's gonna kind of follow dolrum's lead and ask the same question he did and kind of just look around the ship okay <clears throat> Uh, I mean, Hennis will probably uh, stay stick with the group if that's what all they're what they're all doing. But uh, she's mainly just committing what she's seeing to memory. Understandable. Okay. So, um, in the the ground level of this ship is pretty much one gigantic cargo bay. Um, very similar to the Normandy's, like for Mass Effect, there's the Normandy. The bottom level has like work, be- like benches and cargo areas and vehicles and all that stuff. Uh, very similar to that, just the size of a class or scale five sh- vessel. Uh, there is a section that is um, laid out for all the ah, that is set up for the comfort of all the individuals being brought on board. So they are seated comfortably they are given drinks of their choice uh there's another air most of this area is where all the food is being um brought in with automated grav lifters uh overseen by a couple similar or similarly unarmored vitars i'm just following along listening listening to them explain it Mm -hmm. um and then i'm also going to ask if i could see the rest of the ship Uh, the two uh, the two Vitars say, I'm sorry, that's uh, military property. This is as far as we'll allow the public to see. I understand that. I appreciate you showing me this much. Mm-hmm. And you, as you turn around and start heading back out, uh, you're met by one of the armored individuals. Um, and he uh, raises his uh, weapon, or he raises a uh, long disruptor rifle. Hang on. Pardon me, gentlemen, ladies. There used to be four of you. Where's the one in blue? Oh, he is our doctor. There was a medical emergency up on the uh, ship where um, his attention was needed, so he went up there. Uh, Roll me presence command, please. Oh, boy. I have composure. Social combat. I have composure. Okay. Uh, What is the difficulty? uh, This will be an opposed roll. Oh, boy. We have three momentum, question mark. (laughs) (laughs) I'm just looking through my different thing. Um, yeah, I'm going to take all three for two additional die. Okay. All right. Aelin's just inside his ring, wondering how Ember would be thinking about all of this right now. Oh, oh man. wow. Okay. Wow. Oh, holy cow. Dolrum doesn't play around. No, he does not. Uh, yeah, so... The... Do we gain momentum from that, or is that yeah, just a thing? I think like that? that I think you do gain momentum for the number of successes you get over top, okay. so... Okay, that so that's probably what be... four. Yes, that. Uh, nope, he does. Uh, these guys do have a scrutiny for one of their focuses, so that would be three momentum for you. Three. Okay. Yep. Okay. Uh, he or she, whoever's behind the uh, mask, very well, and we'll turn back to the rest of the group and start shouting out the. Um, to the cargo loaders to move faster because they're already behind schedule. All in all, this whole thing is taking about two hours. It's actually a fairly efficient operation. As I'm slowly walking out, as one of the cargo things uh, pass by me, I'm going to act like I trip or caught my foot and drop the armband on the box. Okay. Or in the box. Very well. 
So Galen has become an unwitting passenger. How does Ga does Galen is Galen able to turn himself on? I never thought to ask that. Oh yeah. I thought so. <clears throat> okay. The doctor's programming was incorporated, which included the ability to self-activate and self-deactivate. Uh, Makes sense. Okay. So Galen's on a ship. Uh, on a boat. Let's see. Okay. So he is up there. Uh, as you guys um, recompose yourself outside the ship, um, the last of the Vitar's volunteers uh, heads on board. Uh, by Dol Dolrum's count, there is about uh, 200 or so individuals who have been tithed. Most of which, of course, are the elderly or the infirm. There's a few who just seem to wander about. Or not wander about, I got distracted. There are a few who just have volunteered for whatever reason. Um, hmm. There is a small uh, ritualized farewell um, as Curvet um, gives thanks on behalf of the great Imperator ja Japaler the Final. Um, and on cue, uh, himself and all four of his armored compatriots uh, do a quick spin on their heels and uh, do a, a group march onto the uh, ship as its cavernous doors begin to grind close. Hmm. Uh, yeah. They all leave. There is a loud roar of the engine which shakes the ground for uh, kilometers as powerful thrusters uh, scorch the earth beneath them and the ship raises with the um, grace of an eagle piloting a blimp as it tr fights its way through the clouds and reaches orbit. So Malice just looks at Berg and the rest of you and says, I really wish that we could have had the dinner before they left. Is it normal for them to come early? No. They're... Uh, the Vitars Imperium uh, prides itself on its punctuality. Uh, the, perhaps they felt that perhaps the war is not going as well as they had hoped. There had been some communications on such matters, but I had not thought it so dire. Oh well. And she, she begins um, heading back to the command center. Please, you're welcome to stay as long as you wish. However, I have duties to assign. We understand. We're going to have to get going here uh, soon. Uh, we have other appointments which we need to keep. I hope you understand. Uh, we would like to come back and visit another time if you would uh, would like that. Oh, absolutely. Um, it is great to make new friends in this time of conflict. Uh, Berg, could you please seize them out? Berg just goes, finally. This way, please. And we'll follow him to where we came in and beam up. Okay. And on that note, I believe now is a good time to take a bio break. Uh, so in, let's come back to this in about 10 minutes, shall we? All right. Sounds good. Sounds good. Sure. All right. One second.
Okay, and we are back. So, welcome back everyone. And now, we are going to hop onto the bridge, I suspect. So we've had a scene change, so we lose one momentum. Alright. Okay, uh, Commander Dalrum and his team have uh, reappeared, uh, with the one exception that Galen doesn't appear to be among them. Where's the doctor? Well... You see... He did something stupid, didn't he? Crawford no, I take full responsibility on this one. Out of, his, out of his chair and kind of like... In a way you haven't seen, kind of gets semi-close to Dolan. Not exactly up in their face, but close. I take full responsibility on this one. But, given the nature that uh, was happening on the colony and it not sitting well with any of us, we decided a little investigation was in order. An investigation that might have been better if you had cleared it through me first. It was spur of the moment, sir. Uh, Out of character, yes. would Galen... This is going to sound like... it. Would Galen... We still have, like, quote-unquote copies of him on Cerberus, or is he no. not going to be there? He he is currently not on Cerberus, nor is he on the ship in any way, shape, or form. He, the Master Program has tossed himself onto an unknown alien vessel. He visibly, like, basically, like, Picard face palms. Just... Guess we have to follow that ship, don't we? Captain, the ship or the uh, the Vitars vessel is uh, jump is heading to warp, sir. I'm assuming Crawford you would... just gives you a look of like, we should follow them, shouldn't we? It just happens that we're going to explore in the same direction, right, Captain? But you're cutting out there. Um... Oh, I just dropped a red. Can you hear me? I, yep, I can I, hear you now. I got the gist of what of what you said. Without turning to look, he just goes, Ensign Mud. Yes, Captain. Change course to follow the Vitar's vessel. Of course, Captain. And Sullivan Barnett, you realize real quick from your science console that this ship is actually heading to the other system that you guys were going to visit anyways uh, with the planet of Doliv. I believe you had called it um, uh, a, a object or object beta. Yep. And that's what it was down as in the log. So yes. Very well. I'm going to no, I'm about to start tapping things into the console but I'm going to think better in terms of the captain uh, sir to track yeah. down uh, Lieutenant Galen's uh, hollow emitter band but and might uh, might elicit detection from the uh, Vitaris vessel uh, eight to be the I'd hate to be the person that mutes to an interstellar incident. So, um, if you would, if you so wish it, sir, I can attempt the scan and maybe try to obfuscate that. Or if you would prefer that we wait, I can do that now. I just wanted the option to be on the table, sir. To help with this, we have two momentum. We could use it to create an advantage. I have one in mind, but... Yeah. Let's wait if... Galen's as smart as I think he is. He'll find a way to communicate with us subtly. Okay. In the meantime... Uh... 
Uh, just let me know if you need anything, sir. I might try to reconfigure the primary sensor array and see if um, adjust for a uh, see if I can adjust for a uh, more of a phase uh, more of a phase sweep that would uh, register photonic life forms specifically, but it would be within a narrow enough band that wouldn't pick that up. I'm shopping the eventual advantage that I might want to create with the help of the Technobabble chart. Of course. <laughs> Start making those configurations while we're on our way. Hey, Captain. Okay. Um, so, question to Galen. Uh, how aware are you of your surroundings at the moment? I can sense time. So okay. I, I can just go like, well, I've been on the ship for this long, such as it. Um... It just depends on if anything was unstacked on top of the crate. I'll try and reactivate. Uh, probably. I don't know, how much time has passed since uh, departure? Um, it would, from the time you tossed or you trusted yourself with um, uh, with Commander Dolrum, it has been. Let's see. Would have taken him about 15 minutes to get out of the system. Jump to war. Uh, let's say it has been roughly six hours for the moment. Um, yeah, I'd kick my program on. Okay. So we are going to jump to here real quick. Ooh, shiny. Shiny. Okay, so Galen. Very shiny. It It is pretty, it actually does look pretty clean on the inside, I gotta say. So, so Galen, you appear on a stack of uh, crates. I sort of just imagine you popping in an um, immediate sitting position. Oops, that's not what I wanted to appear. What the heck? There you go. Yeah, I'll just, like, sit up, look around. Like... Hmm. Uh, the first thing you notice is that there's no sound. Uh, the second thing you notice is there's no sound because there's currently no oxygen. I'm uh, just gonna smile to myself like, oh, I'm glad I, I was the one that, took, that came for this. <laughs> uh -huh. Um, there is, um... A quick uh, visual glance of the area where the Vitaris were, and um, they are all currently unconscious. And they're just as you begin to notice this, uh, the hiss of oxygen returning, or the hiss of life support returning to the bay begins to, uh, well, the bay repressurizes, so to speak. And once it does, a small flurry of um, the armored individuals um, come out of one of the bays. And as soon as uh, one has a uh, tricorder in their hand and begins give them a quick up and down over each of the individuals. I'm just going to stay as head as I can. Okay. Um, and observing, but I'm going to keep as low as I can, even so far as going as relaxing the containment field to like press myself even further into the container. Okay. Um, if you wish to call that, if you wish to spend that momentum, that would grant you the advantage. If not, then there won't be much of one, I'm afraid. But. Uh, sure. I'm okay with that. Is everyone okay with that? Yes. I'm sure. fine with that. Go ahead. Okay. So, um, after a, what you assume is a currently internal uh, communications are done, just on how they're talking to one another, uh, the, the armored individuals remove their helmet. So, uh, one is this, and she is flanked by a couple of these guys. And another one. And one of these guys. Ah. And the uh, female with the artificial eye um, begins uh, sort of talking to herself. And uh, her words are alien for the first little while until your uh, translator has heard enough and picks it up. 
and begins to translate what she says as she's going to each one of the bodies. Okay, this one is uh, too irradiated. His memories will not be of any use. He's organic waste. Dispose of him. This one is perfectly fine. Oh, that's a wonderful us. Uh, that's a wonderful medulla. This one can be pro. This one can be a. Uh, this one can be downloaded. This one can be downloaded. Waste download. Waste download. And uh, she stops at one. Ooh, it's rare that they appear so handsome. Have this one downloaded for my personal enjoyment. Uh, let's see. Waste. And she does this for each of the bodies. <clears throat> Um, the ones that she calls a waste um, are uh, immediately uh, there's a knife slash right through their neck and their corpses are dragged away uh, the ones that are she marks for processing are treated much more delicately uh, the chairs that they have slumped into to, um, restraints pop out from them to keep their bodies from falling on the floor and those chairs are then uh, wheeled out towards one of the main entrances or exits in this case and now let me roll this here Galen's just watching he's committing her memory to face oh, her, her face to memory <laughs> <Blah>. <laughs> okay internal sensors do not detect you oh, you can thank your advantage for that <clears throat> Uh, all in all, the process takes about 15 minutes um, before there is no life in the cargo bay. Okay. Do any of them leave? Do any of them stay? Uh, they uh, all leave. Uh, the two bodyguard males head out with the slain individuals, and these two head out with the processed. Okay. Uh... Any computer consoles? Uh, there are a few. Okay. Um, I'm going to poke around on a computer console. I'm just going to see what opens up and just close it. And just try and go back and forth. Just not access anything that looks sensitive. Just, you know, okay. open browsers. And see what their history were. Okay. Uh, roll me... Let's see. This will be... Um insight or no let's roll daring plus engineering uh this will be a difficulty of two and if you have anything like computer science or hacking or something along those lines that would work nope okay we'll see what you learn what oh, uh no focuses yep <clears throat> well that's one success um I haven't gotten enough threat yet, so I'll take that for threat. I'll let that succeed at cost. Ooh. Um, you are as you are on the ship, uh, the Void Nightmare, or at least as cl that's what it translates to in, you know, Federation standard. Um, there appears to be a captain of this vessel who identifies. Ah. It is identified as... Notes, don't fail me now. Uh, it is identified as Belthier Voidrunner. Okay. Um, there's not much that is publicly available, especially down here. The systems are... Uh, it, you don't go too far before you hit some uh, pretty serious-looking uh, security prompts. Like, if you proceed, the captain will be notified. Um, you okay. do see that this species calls themselves the Draven. And they appear to be, well, pirates and slavers from what you can understand. Uh, I'm able to, like, get a location of crew members, like where they're on the ship, real time? Mm, no, not with this. No? Not with this system, I'm afraid. It's kept fairly isolated because this is the only part of the ship that is publicly accessible. Uh, then I'm going to go out the door that had the two gentlemen with the bodies. Okay. Uh, I'm going to be very sneaky about it. Of course you are. Sneaky, sneaky. 
Okay. I'm the doctor. Yes. <laughs> I don't have any training. <laughs> okay. I'm a doctor, not... You're a doctor, not a bloody secret agent. <laughs> uh, the... Uh, the door oh, uh, the door slides up with a fairly loud um, scraping of gears and pulleys. Well, not pulleys, but you know what I mean. Hydraulics. Mm -hmm. um, there, the hallway, uh, your olfactory sense senses, even if you could actually smell anything, um, are quick to pick up the smell of biodegrading organic material. <clears throat> Um, there is the sound of loud machinery, similar to um, um, buzz saws going through wood or of oh. that nature. Uh, there is no one visible, but um, well, they went this way and fairly recently. So. Okay, um, I'm gonna try and follow, um, peeking around the corners, just seeing if I can see anyone. All right. Um, Um, you head towards the sound and come to a, an, a fairly large uh, processing center. Um, you, the two uh, male uh, draven, uh, you see that they have a pile of the Vitaris bodies um, stacked like limp pieces of firewood. And one by one they are throwing them into a large grinder. Um, where the gr you're not sure where the grinder deposits the stuff as it's built into a series of tubes but it's probably not pleasant it's just the two of them I see uh, it's just the two of them yes they killed innocent people lied to them and then killed them right. um how close are the two? Uh, it's a fairly large room, and a decent amount of bodies separate you from them. Um, I would say that it is probably a... Let's see. So it would be about 40, 50 meters, so that would be about 70 feet. So they're not that far apart from each other? No, they're... They're literally, um, each... It takes two of them to haul a limp body, so, yeah, they're very close to one another. Hmm. Uh, these are gonna have the same... Because I don't have my tricorder, but going off the information and scans I took, uh, would they have, uh, the same ports on them? They do... They do not have any ports on them, no. In that case, uh, I'm going to go back out the room. Okay. Uh, you time your uh, leaving with the sound of a body hitting a grinder so that you make no Ugh. accidental noise. Galen's and making a fist. And with that, we are going to cut back to the lunette. As you enter the... Uh, um, ah, as you enter the... Dolive system. <clears throat> uh, scene change. I don't think we have any momentum left, so it doesn't really matter. Oop. Yep. Okay, so the Dolive system, or um, obscure beta, beta, or uh, beta second, I believe. Yep. Is a planet whose system specs I had accidentally closed. One split second. <clears throat> okay, so uh, this system uh, is uh, circling around a uh, class G star, so a, a yellow star, uh, slightly um, younger than the Earth star, or Sol. Uh, it has uh, it is actually quite an interesting system makeup here. There is two planets within the hot zone, a Class B planet, which is a Merc similar to Mercury, 
uh, a class F planet, which is known as a geoplastic planet, which is undergoing a um, geological cooling at a fairly quick, uh, ge geologically speaking, a, a fairly quick rate. Um, the literal elephant in the room is a class I supergiant, which is... Um, so you guys recall, you guys know how that, you know, 16 su Saturns can fit into Jupiter, more or less. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yep. Uh, 15 Jupiters can fit into a class I supergiant. Oh, fun. Yeah. So it's taken oh, up. My. Yeah. It has taken up uh, orbit as near the outside of the system, um, going at a fairly sluggish pace. It has absorbed several of the moons into its own uh, into its own orbit and I realize I haven't actually moved you to it yet let's do that shall we I thought I have how you moved me to it hang on yeah can confirm I'm seeing the yeah, I'm planet seeing too it. okay but on the stream, it's not stream it's is old be, stream is being weird I apologize for this There we go. Just had to reactivate things. Making things look nice for the stream. There we go. <clears throat> so, um, furthest, uh, uh, the furthest planet in the solar system is a class O planet, known as a pelagic class or water-based. Um, which is quite interesting to uh, Sullivan Barnett because planets this far out that are almost entirely made of water should be giant snowballs. This one is actually fairly, I wouldn't call it tepid, but it's thawed, which might be interesting in the future. Uh, the planet you're looking for, Dolive, is actually a planet-sized moon around the supergiant. And um, I'd like to have Ensign Mud do a silent running ch check, please. Uh, so this will be a control plus uh, con action. And the ship can s assist with structure plus con. Nope, sorry, engines plus con. Basically, this is um, how sneakily you can enter the planet system without being detected. Engines con, right? I uh, yes, engines plus con. Okay, that's one from the lunette. Uh, I should say, did I say difficulty? This would be a difficulty of two. Uh, I'll roll for mud if nobody okay. else is. And you said it was control con. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh. Starship pilot or precision flight control for a focus? Either or will work. Alright. Okay, you guys get one momentum. Okay. Uh, you guys followed the ion trail of the ship uh, back to Dolib's surface. And it doesn't appear. Mud is fairly confident that he is able to bring you in unseen. Well, Lieutenant, wait, is are you back, Barnett? Cause I know yes, I'm here. Back. Sorry, I cool. I didn't know that I was back. Okay. No, it's okay. Um, how has uh, reconfiguring the sensors been going? Uh, I'm, go I'm going to see what I can do here. With only one momentum, that is not enough to create an advantage unless I give you threat, uh, yes, GM. Yes, I mean, I'm also okay. taking threat. I... And you know, if nobody objects, I think I'm... Uh, how would you guys feel about giving the GM two threat, being especially nice today? Uh, sure, that's fine. I you might guess. want our moment. I don't think we've given him any threat yet this game, so... Yeah. 
So, uh, Jim, take, cost. take two threat on this because I... Gladly. ...made an advantage. Gladly. Okay. And it, it's always fun to have the curve balls. Mm-hmm. Yep, and uh, I, I can assist with uh, modifying well, the sensors if needed. Roll a task at this point in order yep. to do that if we're using the threat to create advantage. I forget the uh, um, ins and outs of if, the spend. I would say that if you've created the advantage, uh, then what you've done is pretty much just lowered the difficulty of the scan to pretty much something that is easily achievable. Um, okay. What, yeah. So if I recall right, you guys were going to look for Galen's hollow emitter? Yes. Yeah, so what I was trying to do, um, and I should say that this had a sort of multi-tiered aspect which might impact the nature of the test. Um, I was attempting to reconfigure our sensors in order to be able to scan for um, in order to scan for Galen or pick up a holographic signature mm -hmm. but to do so without triggering their passive sensors. Like I wanted to narrow the band sufficiently that it wouldn't, it wouldn't show that they were being pinged by our own sensors. Um, That's fair. Okay, that's doable. Um, so if you're looking for Galen, this will be a... I would say in this case it would be a control plus science or control plus engineering. Um, it would have been much higher difficulty, but that would, with the advantage it would now be difficulty 2, advanced sensors, difficulty of 1. Um, so okay, so I'll, I'll do control engineering for my assist. Okay. All right, and uh, I guess I will go control and science to pull my roll here. Sensor operation, I presume it's going to be nice yep. and versatile here. I assume none of my folk, none of uh, Larcy's focuses would work here. Uh, what does she have? Computers, warp core mechanics, experimental tech uh, technology, starship recognition, starship power systems, and extravehicular operations. Uh, afraid not. Okay, uh, so that is two momentum for you guys. Uh, you okay. f uh, you find uh, Galen's emitter still on the ship. Uh, the ship is in orbit uh, um, near the uh, near the equator of the planet. Um, I should. I don't think I mentioned it. The planet itself is Class L, so marginally habitable, mostly uh, tough flora and very little water. And there appears to be a uh, colony on the surface. Uh, the ship itself does not appear to be active, other than, or I should say, it's just in station keeping mode. Lieutenant Yamato, are we able to get any sort of lock on Galen's hollow emitter? Um, I believe so. We we figured out its location. I don't know if we can lock it onto it for a transporter or anything. You know, the shields are down, Captain, uh, Mud would say. Of course, we... Try to work on getting Galen back here. Um, Master Chief, I'm, is there a ready room on this ship? Yes, there is. Master Chief Ember, can I speak with you in my ready room briefly? Certainly, sir. And for the first time since she came out of the ship, she actually stands up and opens her eyes and heads for the ready room. I don't actually have the red room slip. So, you guys are just going to have a nice private chat in engineering. Alright, <laughs> sure. That works. <laughs> I'll make a note to add one in the next game. Okay. So, first things first. What do you think of Commander Dorum and Dr. Galen's actions? 
I think it is not only a violation of the Prime Directive to have done so in the first place, but the fact that they've done it half-cocked without informing anyone else to be uh, far too risky. Uh, we are now dealing with the unfortunate situation where we must once again violate the first or the Prime Directive to retrieve Galen before, hopefully, the Vitaris are otherwise aware of his presence because if they get their hands on him, guess what? That means we've just handed them hollow technology, which gets us in trouble. And I'm in agreement, and I want to say I know why Commander Dolrum did it, and I can understand his sentiment, and personally, I've wanted to break the Prime Directive as well to try and help, but when I think about it, it's not really our place. And I think something has to be done here. I'm just not sure what. So I kind of want some of your input. Are you referring to a course of action to resolve this situation or something past that, sir? Uh, something to resolve this and something along the lines of from, uh, formal reprimands for both of them. Well, I mean, last I checked, their shields were not up and they were not aware of our presence, so the easiest course of action is just going to be to transport that armband back to our ship. As for reprimand, sir, uh, you can certainly do so for Dolrum. It'll go on his record. For the hologram, I don't think there's anything you can do unless you specifically put in a program limiter that restricts him to sickbay only. Otherwise, he's just going to continue to go about as he pleases as holograms seem to do. And for the first time, I'm actually agreeing with you. All right, well, we'll worry about that when we get back to the station. For now, let's just worry about getting our doctor back. Uh, Did McCall. The... Yes. Oh, question for you. Yes. Their shields are down, yes? Their shields are down. What range are they at? Um, I'm assuming, at the moment, I am assuming that you guys are roughly in orbit of the Supergiant. Um, and holding action there until you can get closer. Uh, so, uh, I'd say that you're in transporter range, but just barely. So they are not within close range is what I'm getting at. Correct. At best, they would be medium, but even that's probably pushing it. All right, so I'm just doing head math here. So transporter by default, walking everyone through what's going on. Uh, transporters have to be at close range. So because they're at medium at best, that goes up by one, making it a difficulty three. The transporter pad is the destination, so no increase there. However, the target is not on a transporter pad, making it a difficulty four. However, we have advanced sensor switch, which brings that back down to a three. So, even though engineering isn't really Ember's forte, again, without showing any sign to the contrary, Ember's going to try and beam uh, the doctor straight back to the ship. Okay, so, um, now, how does this work with your new talent? Um, so, I think, uh, I think transporters are control engineering. Yeah, control engineering, ship and... assist. Uh, sensors engineering for the ship. Mm -hmm. uh, do we have any momentum? We have three. I will be spending all of it. Alrighty. All right, I'll roll for the ship. Okay. A sen sensors engineering. Correct. You yeah. said. Well, there's the three we need. Mm-hmm. All right. Yep. Uh, go ahead and re-roll that ship die. Mm -hmm. Okay. One moment. <clears throat> well, okay. Two momentum back. Very nice. Excellent. So, uh, again, Captain, there's just sort of a moment where... Ember's staring maybe like right past you and then her eyes refocus and says 
Well, Captain, if you haven't figured it out by now, I uh, I had Usha give me a uh, new little toy, which I'm having quite a lot of fun with. Uh, I believe you will find that the good doctor is waiting for you in Transporter Room 1. All righty. Okay. Crawford to Mud. Mud here, sir. I think we've got an idea of what's going on here. We don't have any place to stop but set a course back for Cerberus. All right, sir. I know kind of look to Ember to, like, kind of asking, like, is that the right choice to just leave? Oh, I'm sure the doctor is going to tell us some big revelation, so maybe give it five, ten minutes before we actually leave. All right, yeah. <laughs> I'll give it that at least. Okay. Uh, so, Captain and Master Chief heading to Transporter Bay? No, yep. I'm going back to the bridge. Okay. Captain then to the transporter room. Uh, so, uh, Lieutenant Galen, you're busy uh, collecting as much information as possible. And then all of a sudden, there is the familiar sensation of a transporter pad over your hollow emitter. And you are back here. And Captain Crawford walks through in less than 30 seconds. Captain. Better have a damn good explanation. Maybe. I think in this case, maybe isn't good enough, but go ahead. The people they took from the colony, they slit their throats. If they weren't satisfactory or met whatever condition they were required, they slit their throats. Took their bodies and ground them up. I was simply curious as to why they had similar life signs, well, identical life signs, and wanted to just test a theory. But they slit their throats. I have seen multiple videos and ran multiple simulations of losing patients. I have lost patients. I've seen atrocities from the Dominion War to the Borg incursion to simple acts of violence from the Orion Syndicate. But actually witnessing it firsthand. I wanted to ignore my ethical subroutine. I wanted to try and save those people. But all I could do was watch them slit their throats. I don't believe they are who they say they are. And trust me, I don't either, but I understand what you and the commander were wanting to do, but, and I wanted to as well, but this isn't our place. I had no intentions of interfering with the planet's colony. It was to just try and gain a sense of an understanding of why. These people were lying to them. And I do not believe their part, and this ship in particular, is part of any organization or government. They do not... Jim, do I recognize the species? Uh, no, this is the first time you've encountered this particular species. And they've been calling themselves part of that organization that we first met, so that we're that is correct. to allow. That is correct. They, they, they identified themselves falsely. They are not who they say they are, Captain. They are not even the same species we encountered. They're wearing costumes. Could I walk in? Sure. Walk in walks uh, Commander Doldrum. Oh boy, I'm in the big chair. Oh no, I'm in the big chair. <laughs> <laughs> um... Could I have certain orders in place after Ember left during our conversation? I suppose you could pass them along, sure. Um, if Commander Dorum were to leave the bridge, it'll be I would put Master Chief Ember in charge. 
Oh, I'm not in the big chair. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, is this going to be a standing order, or just this one time? Um, just this one time. There may be more, but just this one time for now. Okay. Very well. Yeah, I just stroll in. And Crawford just gives sort of a, like, a curt nod. Doesn't say anything. I just look up. Am I interrupting? Oh, frankly, you are, but I assume you're here for a reason. I just wanted to know if my hunch about everything is correct. And he just kind of, you know, turns to Galen. They slit their throat. I don't care about the Prime Directive in this case. I am to do no harm. To let this continue is to do harm. I agree with you, Doctor. But now that we know this situation, as I read between the lines, I think we can pass the word along and not have to worry about getting involved much. We still have prisoners. I don't know if they're still going to be alive or not. You mentioned uploading them. So whoever they are, they do have access to this technology I was initially curious about. What were they uploading specifically, Doctor? Memories, maybe? I didn't get a good chance to go into the system and I was trying to delve deeper when I was saved. And if I've read your reports correctly, Doctor, most of the species has Implants? Memory implants? Yes, the ones that visited. So, using my background of security, I'm wondering if these people are runners on a black market. Huh. It's at this point you get a call from Ember from the bridge. It says, uh, Captain, that uh, five to ten minute window has elapsed. Should we be going or are we staying? Set course for Cerberus Station, Max Warp. Aye, sir. Am I dismissed? To sick bay and sick bay only, Doctor. Am I a prisoner? Not a prisoner. But there is some kind of punishment that will be involved. And as for you as well, Commander. Sir, I take full responsibility for this. I was the one that proposed the idea. And I understand the sentiment behind it because I wanted to do it as well, but quite frankly, if I just let this, these kinds of things keep going with a slap on the wrist, we I'll quite frankly be seen as spineless. Good day, Bye. Commander. And he walks out. When I transfer back to the sick bay, I'm going to send a video log of everything I saw aboard that ship in full detail to the captain. Very well. Okay, so it is going to be roughly uh, two, um, a three-day travel at maximum warp back to Cerberus Station. <clears throat> I have a very important question to ask here. Uh, is anyone else told what happened on that ship, or is the captain and uh, the other two officers keeping them to keeping it to themselves? I.e., do you fill Ember in? Um, Crawford would fill in only Ember. All right. So the reason I ask is because we are coming up on a scene change, but we have two momentum. If Ember is told of the situation. And again, without prompting, she's going to send a, a coded message to the planet defenses. Since I already had control of their friend or foe, mm -hmm. we're just going to set the uh, war effort ship to uh, foe. An interesting idea. Okay. And I will spend our two momentum before it goes away from the scene change. Um, 
I would want to send a message back to uh, the Empire so they are aware that their name is being used to do this. Okay. Are you sending that with the captain's... Um, uh, with the captain knowing, or is this going to be a s subtle, sneaky, sneaky thing? I would ask the captain, but probably still do it anyway. Okay. All right. Uh, that actually sounds like a fun... Oh, why am I moving this... I am moving this OBS around and not roll 20. Let's let's actually do a let's have a small conversation about that in the uh, ready room, aka engineering. <laughs> okay. Uh, Cap Captain, you're preparing a fairly lengthy report. Um, with videotaped evidence and while Commander Dalrum walks in. Without looking up, he just says, Commander? Yes, Captain? I have a request for you. Go ahead. I would like to inform our new allies of the situation. Quite honestly, I, with that information, I'd like to tell Curvet Charmal myself. Then, sir, why are we going the opposite direction? Uh, boy. Because I agree that I agree that we should. For them to eliminate this problem of using their name in vain. I'll I'll say out of character, since Crawford was already considering this, one of the reports he'll be typing up is something to Curvet Charmall. If they can receive text from this far. Um, because quite frankly, I'm only working on something for it, but if there's any information you, that you feel like I may have missed, you're free to add to it. Just that they were pry they were preying on people who were misinformed that were in the empire, who were still faithful to the empire. And believe this was for the Empire. It's going to take an act of somebody very high up that they would know to come and talk to these people and maybe inform them of how far they are behind and maybe help them catch up. And I think Curvet Charmon might just have to be that man. And he'll hand you just like a small data pad that has the report he's been writing for the curve on it. I take it and go, sir. Look it over, see that I've put everything you think it needs to be there and then send it out. And... Oh, you cut out uh, there, Daldrum. I said, uh, I, sir, and uh, we'll turn around and go to my office to finish the report and send it. Okay. All right. And didn't they say what their species was, I believe, or no? Yep. Um, yep. Uh, the doctor identified them as the Draven. Okay. That would be included as well. Excellent. Um, okay, so let's just do the list, see if anyone wants to do anything else before we get back to the station. Uh, Lars, Larsa Yamato? Um, huh. Not really much I could do. Uh, either 
Yeah, and not not really much I could do at the moment. I mean, okay. my suit, the suit I'm working on is back at the station, and while <laughs> I like to do about one, well, I was thinking I'd do one development uh, thing per se yeah. session on it. We're not really in a position for that. Eh, we'll get back. We'll get back to the station, and then we can run that role. Uh, Sullivan Barnett. I would like a scene with Galen if uh, er, in sick bay. Okay. If you're up for it. I'm always up for scenes with people in sick bay. Well, it's as much to my holographic friend as it is uh, as Marcus has, of course. Uh, of course, has no idea what exactly transpired based on what I've uh, gleaned from our. Like or what we've established in the meta. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Lieutenant Sullivan Burnett right will back. walk, All right. walk in at some point um, when off duty. Um, I guess uh, like looking around for Galen uh, up to at this point. Uh, Galen will activate and smile and like please state the nature of the medical emergency. Oh, less emergency and more curiosity, Doctor. Um, the, I don't know, uh, I never actually, you know, looked into your specifications when I first got to Cerberus. So, honestly, I'd, be it um, or personnel of which I, well, you, I guess you have an interesting overlap there. Uh, I'm more. I was more interested in the sensor suite, quite frankly. Tell me what uh, what was uh, what design process went into um, your hollow matrix, there, Lieutenant. He'll give you a very warm smile and nod his head, like, and he will gesture his hands towards himself, like I was composed with the hollow matrix of the AMH Mark One from Voyager upon the return. A duplication was procured and then installed as part of the foundation. The second foundation of my program was James Moriarty from the Enterprise D. Oh. So, which one of those accounted for amount of dumb that it must have taken for you to board an alien vessel uh, in a with a group of people we hardly know and could have started an interstellar incident with. Uh, I'm just a little curious about that. He'll just slowly tilt his head and his face will scrunch. His brow furrows. Like, I did what? You, uh, you do recall, uh, you do recall, uh, I don't know, Houdiniing your way aboard a, uh, er, aboard an alien vessel and, aboard that Vitar ship and running off to get no. earned. My program start date is today. Burnett, I'm going to run a self-diagnostic. So, shimmer and come back. The... There seems to be files locked away. A great deal of them. Encrypted by me, apparently. Oh. The program seems to be running as well. At, at this, it, like, Barnett just stands there for a moment, kind of strokes the goatee a little bit, and it, it his goatee a little bit, and just kind of. Alan, uh, what happened to you? not know how to answer that question. It's out of side of my programming. At this point, uh, yeah, Marcus is just kind of troubled. Thank you, Doctor. That'll... Oh. Very well. Have a good day, Lieutenant. Just gonna walk out uh, like walk out of the corridor not knowing precisely uh, where or whom to turn to at this point 
Well, I will point out that uh, matters like this either go to the chief engineer or they go to chief of security for very obvious reasons. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna go find uh, I'm gonna go find Lieutenant Yamato at this. Okay, I'm going to assume. Actually, oh, sorry, please continue. I'm I'm pondering over this because it, to the extent that Marcus has been working with the or has been working with the crew at this point, um, the extent he kind of understands Galen. Tell you what, gonna make this a quick self roll here, because um, I need to figure out precisely where his inclination is in this. Uh, let's call that a roll, roughly looking like this. This has no application towards any momentum. That's okay. Clearly, something has badly messed with Galen in this case, or he is under orders, um, in which case it's less likely to be a technical glitch. Um, so I will still go to engineering um, and see if I can find Larce at this point. Larce is busy in engineering. She's redoing some... Uh, doing some ah, routine maintenance of the warp plasma inject. Well, probably not while it warped. Uh, she's doing routine maintenance on one of the impulse engines since at warp, and impulse engines aren't really needed. Yeah. Uh, Lieutenant Barnett, uh, can I do anything for you? Um... Not in. I'm not entirely sure at this point, Lieutenant. What kind of looks on for a moment? Oh. No, I. I'm sorry. I I can't do this. I can't talk about this right now. And turn around because at this point. He's like caught in obvious conflict, but he re uh, he realizes that in the event this was a decision by Galen, then trying to approach the engineer and uh, finding a workaround for that might be an invasion of privacy. So he's kind of um, right. Okay. Uh, I don't mean to potentially cut the scene off that short, but Barnett is just kind of he's all over the place at this point. That's fine. Okay. Uh, Galen, anything you're doing at the moment? He is currently offline. All right. Uh, oh, I forgot. Ember. Ember, anything you're doing? I mean, unless someone tells me about the whole Galen situation, I'm just chilling at my post on the bridge. Fair enough. Uh, uh, you'll... Hmm, who would get a beep? Go ahead. Uh, nope, no one will get a beep. I can't think of anyone who uh, Galen would report to for anyone visiting the sick bay. Fair enough. An automated thing like, you know, such and such individual came into the sick bay at this time. That's it. Yeah. No, and, yeah, probably just personal or met sick bay log, and, you know, if they came into sick bay brandishing a weapon, that might be a bit different, but. Yeah. Okay. Um, Dalrum, anything else? Not particularly. Okay. Uh, Captain. Uh, none for me, at least on the ship. Okay. Uh, so the uh, the three days at warp uh, pass by with relative silence. Um, Galen is offline for most of the time, and everyone just seems to be focusing about their duties. You return to the Carceri Nebula entrance. <clears throat> There's still debris from a Klingon bird of prey. <laughs> Not anymore. Yeah. And then it, it added character to the nebula. It did indeed. Um, I actually need to put a Midas array out here since there's actually one at the external entrance now. Um, I'll make a note of that. And then finally you return to the station proper. 
Upon return, you receive a hail from the um, from uh, Commander Bernie Jail. Captain, yep. welcome back. I am pleased to report that everything has functioned perfectly in your absence. I'm glad to hear that. And upon upon that, you receive the 10-page report uh, from Bernie Jail detailing every single minute action that happened on board the station under his watch and everything that he did to make sure that it all went well. It is so full of self-praise. It is hilarious. Oh, they had to send him. <laughs> uh, one of those. Yeah, Lars David groan. Oh, jeez. <laughs> no, I, I, oh, I, I, I knew he was. Just, oh, <laughs> she, she's had to work with him. For, I, she probably had to work with him for a bit during the. Uh, well, uh, was he there during construction? Uh no. He'll he'll showed up afterwards. But yes, this is Commander right. Bernie Jail. Doesn't he look like a prick? Yeah. <laughs> and she, a little bit. And she definitely groans when she, when she, see, when she uh, hears his voice because, oh, no. There, there's a time. There's, there's, there's one on every ship. <sighs> okay, so, uh, final... Obviously, she's... She's had to do. She's had to deal with the guys like him before. Okay. <laughs> they think great. Think they're God's yeah, gift yeah, to yeah. humanity. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So let's do uh, wrap up scenes. You guys are back on the station. Um, I know that uh, Galen had requested a scene with Sullivan Barnett, but that was before he literally locked himself behind a code wall. Um, do you still want to do that scene, Galen? Uh, if anyone wants to go check on him, sure. Okay. I hmm. allow me to roll for that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, while you figure that out, uh, let's do Larce's roll for her suit that she's building. Um. So, if Larce, if you could please roll me. Um. Uh, insight engineering. Uh, this will be a difficulty four. And this is to figure out the best way to improve your suit's um, uh, three-dimensional handling in zero-g space. Okay. Insight engineering, you said. Mm -hmm. And might I recommend a your determination? Because that's a thing that can be spent. Yeah, I, th I think that works. Okay. I'll go with the uh, uh, I'll go with the value technological progress does not stop to ask what's the worst that can happen sounds like a good determination to me or good value to me yep and experimental tech for a focus naturally And uh, not going to spend any threat for more D20s. Well, I could. You could. Hmm. I'm really regretting not spending threat earlier. Oh, well. <laughs> yeah, uh, sure, I'll do that. I'll, okay. uh, <laughs> so that would be a two threat for another D20 at this point? Uh, that is correct, yes. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Okay, so, so that is um, five is successes. Total, yeah, total of five. Okay. Uh, while working on the uh, the USS Lunette's um, impulse engines, you had a um, brain. You had a brainwave while diagnosing one of the um, matter-to-energy converters and realized that with a slight bit of... Um, ah, with, a, with a precise 
uh, burst, you would be able to amplify the thrust tenfold. While useless for a large ship like a shuttlecraft or a lunette, or like a shuttlecraft or the lunette, uh, such a, a burst on a individual flight suit would actually be quite useful. So congratulations, oh. you figured out how to make the darn thing fly. <laughs> yep. Okay, now we will cut to sick bay where okay. Barnett and I. Sorry. Heading that way. Okay. Uh, where is the infirmary? There's the infirmary. Mm. Okay, so uh, Sullivan Barnett enters the infirmary. Is Galen there by chance? I uh, he'll activate one to see if someone enters. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, Lieutenant Sullivan Barnett is entering in a bit of a huff. Computer, EMH, I, I don't have the patience for this. Galen. I'm not an EMH. So we'd apply to right. an emergency medical doctor. I apologize for that distinction. Uh, that, you know, that's the one thing where I can safely say I have erred and will err in this conversation. Otherwise, I'm pretty confident in this make this plain sulking looks really bad at a vetting department doesn't matter whether you are uh, whether you're for photonic or organic in nature it looks bad what's going on right now that is the uh, that's the kind of nonsense that i, I got away uh, that i didn't escape it. It was honestly what I pulled when I left my last uh, assignment. But it doesn't help anything. So it, you know, whatever you've got locked behind those fire, uh, those little firewalls of yours, isn't going to. Uh, it's not going to help you be a better doctor, or grow as. Uh, it's not going to. Uh, at the end of the day, it's not going to leave you with anything other than just sort of the aimless drift of. So, oh, whatever. I'll be at interesting day-to-day -day assignments goes, so. I don't know what you're talking about. He's starting to wave his hands around as he talks. It wasn't sulking. I was running multiple programs and scenarios in real time. I had information I had to process, and instead of taking me offline completely, I segmented my programming to the side so that if in case an emergency would happen, I could still function and do my job without the cluttering programs that I have found. So you're not you you're still not lobotomized then are you you're all here yes i'm all here more and different in fact oh would you care to meet uh, me on the holodeck marcus just deflates <laughs> would you okay. care to meet me on the holodeck i wish to show you something yeah yeah sure um I'll transfer my program to the holodeck. Okay. I have that around. Marcus just stands there slightly bewildered in the middle of an empty sick bay. Uh, oh, you see, you see uh -huh. a copy of Galen walking around. One of his clones. <laughs> Do I not have Oh. <laughs> yep. No, to the, anyone else that wasn't sick bay, I'm just gonna, like, slight shame over seemingly working myself up yeah. over anyone but yeah yep. okay uh, over to the holodeck over to the holodeck which here we are so when barnett comes in he is going to uh ask rami to cut all monitoring and um seal the holodeck completely um i'm gonna stop you right there because if this is coming from galen Unless you're using like medical command codes that would override the captain, then Ember's gonna get an alert about it. Oh, the, the, I, he will use his medical. That was the next thing I was gonna say. All right. Well, she'll still get an alert, but won't get the full nature of it then. Just so you know. Okay. Uh, sorry for the cloak and dagger type situation here, but. 
This is what I saw. What's going on? And he'll show the raw viewing of what he saw aboard that ship. Uh, at least for the room, anyways. Okay. Uh, the first room. Um, like... The room where the separation happened, or the room where the body chuckers? Uh, where they were slitting their throats. Okay. <clears throat> uh, so, yeah. Sullivan Barnett, you are forced to... Well, you're not forced. You could probably leave at any time. Uh, you watch the highlight reel of Lieutenant Galen's experience from the uh, quote-unquote Vitars cargo bay. Oh, pale at this. This is what I witnessed. This is what ran within part of my programming at that moment. He's going to play it again, and it's going to show Galen attacking the uh, pirates in his mind, him winning, brutally killing them. Um, just as the um, scenario of Galen going Rambo on the slavers, uh, there is a small chirping from the door as um, it is being overridden by Ember's security codes. Um, once Ember's security codes don't work because medical overrides security, um, there is a cutting beam pointing towards the door. Rami, and program. Acknowledged. And encrypt and lock into my personal file, please. Encrypting contents. Storing contents. Process complete. Is this something that you can still remember even past the encryption? The program, yes. Okay. I have conflict. A part of me wanted to fight them. And all I could do was stand there and hide. I have ran this program multiple times. Try to see where it's coming from. But I cannot pin it down. I thought it was coming from the Moriarty subroutine, but it's not. And it's... the, the um, cutting beam sort of stops and blows inwards as Master Chief kicks down the door. Literally kicks it down. Doctor, Master... you have exactly five seconds to tell me why I should not delete your program in this very instance. You have five seconds. She holds Stand up Stand down, fingers. Master Chief. No, I'm overriding you on this, sir. This is a clear security breach. And frankly, I believe that something's going on with the doctor that someone is not telling me about. Mr. Chief, the doctor was here at my request. I've been, uh, we've been reviewing important medical research. Um, and we've been working oh, really? on tell, a little bit of pressure. Really? medical research, sir. I'm really interested to hear what warranted locking down an entire holodeck with medical command codes. Please tell me. Rami? Please initiate program IR Graves. What's the current running number? 23? 23. Correct. 23. And the uh, program kicks in, and you see Professor IR Graves, um, renowned cyberneticist, I believe, is what it was? Yep. Um, he's in a room, and into the, uh, to the doorway, and Commander Data walks into the room and starts talking with him. And Galen is just watching. I go down to four fingers. <laughs> as, as they're talking, Data gets attacked and goes offline. He's like, so everything's playing out like normal except here. And as Ira Graves is attempting to do whatever he did to Data, a version of Galen appears and starts talking to Ira. Ira stops. And this version of Galen is informing him of uh, the scenario they're in. He's like, I can't pause this program. It has to keep running, uh, Galen tells Ember. I go down to three fingers. I don't care. Just get to the point, Doctor. You point. have to wait. Uh, the other Galen, he's like, Dr. Ira Graves, it is a great honor to meet you. This is going to sound very strange, but at this moment in time, as you perceive it, you're dying. 
You're attempting to store your consciousness on Commander Data. I'm here to tell you that you succeeded. And I'm also here to tell you that you failed. You ended up uploading your consciousness into the Enterprise computer. That program has stayed within the computer banks until the Daystream Institute was requested at the behest of Dr. Galen, myself, to be transferred to a separate station to undergo experimental procedures to restore you to life. Now, I'm going to have to ask you some questions, and I'll have to inform you of some difficult events. Depending on these answers, will result in either being restored into a new program where we can have you active, or this all gets reset and we begin again. And I skip the second finger and go down to one. I don't think this simulation is going to turn out any differently, Galen. Can no, we? He's raising his hands the same way and sitting down, <laughs> same position. And program continue to plays out, and Galen gets up and smiles at our graves, and is like, thank you. The transfer will begin in three, two. And before he even says one, I literally go over to the conduit that I know is behind the wall, and I'm going to take damage from this, but I am literally ripping the power conduit out of the wall. Okay. Galen's just going to look at you like, oh, maybe this might be something that the program could use. And he'll just blink out. Hmm. Let's see. Um, roll me. Roll me five challenge dice, please. Three. Okay. Uh, then that is the amount of damage you take. Uh, since there was an effect, there would be a knockback of a decent amount. But considering that there's no one actually to fight you, I'm, you'll stand up as soon as your body stops tingling. Resilient as you are, several watt or several hundred watts of power is still enough to incapacitate you for a few minutes. Very well. I turn to Sullivan Barnett and I say, "Sir, as of this moment, you are considered uh, under custody until such a time that the captain deems otherwise. Please follow the security officers out. I don't want to make this a scene." Barnett looks at them. Can't, uh, if you can't recognize a rescue mission plain and simple, then... Take him. I don't want to hear it anymore. And at this point, the security team comes in, and if need be, they will literally manhandle you down to the brig. He, Marcus is manhandled as he shouts, I'm lodging a formal protest at this. And, uh... One sec. One sec there, Shizno. Uh, sorry, please continue, Ember. Uh, what I would say is at this point, uh, I... Do a dual channel. I say to both Captain and Rami, or is it Remy? I always get it wrong. I think it's Rami. Um, Rami, I, usually. Rami. Rami, immediately limit all holographic technology on authorization. I give my code. Captain, as of this moment, I believe the hologram has begun a cascade scenario, and I have limited all holographic technology on the station. In the process, I have had to unfortunately put Lieutenant Sullivan Barnett in the brig for what I believe is a conspiracy or conspiracy to what ends i do not know if you could meet me in the brig in about five minutes that would be appreciated so you said she was That's done a for a few lot. minutes <laughs> roughly yes <laughs> time was i transferred back to sick bay um you said that you took yourself offline correct well, uh, she blinked least... me out from the holodeck yeah. i would assume that is where the default where i assume that's where a default thing is yes all right Slapping on my armband within that few minute window, and I'm saying a message to the captain. Okay, um, so captain, you're going to get two messages really quickly to one another. Um, you're in your ready room. Um, yep. Uh, listening to Commander Jail's uh, heroic tale of how he single handedly defused the potential bar brawl between a Romulan, the Romulan, um, um, ambassador guard known as Cujo and the female Klingon. Um, and you know, he's kind of doing the like, yeah, uh huh, sure. Yeah. While he's finishing up uh, Dorum's formal reprimand. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. We'll deal with that. Violent odds. Violent odds. 
that there and do this here. <clears throat> and all of a sudden you get a message from Galen. I believe we're doing the time about right. Captain? <laughs> Doctor? I was just assaulted. He kind of, you know, raises an eyebrow. Assaulted. Yes, the holodeck I was on was attacked by Chief Ember, and she purposely and aggressively attacked the holodeck. And I assume minutes. that around this time I'm also getting the message from Master Chief Ember. Uh, yes, that is correct. I'm going, in the middle of some of that rambling, I'm going to cut off the communication with Galen and listen to the message from Ember. Mm-hmm. Uh, if I recall correctly, Ember was restricting holod or all holographic technology. Um, hol all holographic technology across the entire station uh, based on whatever the highest level code that Ember would have. Mm -hmm. um, there is, as soon as Rami, or as soon as Ember finishes up, Rami materializes quickly. Uh, Captain, I require two uh, uh, senior staff to approve this, to approve an action that uh, Chief Ember has uh, stated. There are, of course, manual overrides should Chief Ember decide to do so from her stations. However, if I'm for automated processes, I do require the approval of two command staff. Has the process been approved by Commander Dolrum? No. Commander Dolrum is currently in his quarters with his family. I am required to go to the most senior officer on on duty. Then consider it approved for now. Understood. Deactivating holographic interfaces. And with that, she immediately winks out of existence. Her voice still carries over the communication systems, of course. Deactivation complete. I'm saying another priority message to the captain. Okay. Captain? I'm calling the Master Chief up to the ready room. Yeah, Master Chief wants to see you in the brig. But I'm oh, yeah, that's me. right. Um, I'll to go use... down to the brig while what he's... Is... While, uh, while Galen's talking. Okay. Captain, whatever you just did is now endangering one of my patients. One of my patients was away in a heart transplant, and they were using a holographic heart while they were kept in stasis. Am I... This is going to be a weird... Am I able to tell if he's lying just via audio communication? Um, no, I highly doubt that. Uh, let's see. Security office is down here. Somewhere. I and have... he's going... <sighs> Jensen's going to show up. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, the, the poor captain has suffered enough. <laughs> Armory? Nope. I have mucked up my, uh... <laughs> Where is the security office? I've had it. Q. R. There it is. I... He... Crawford will contact Rami. Yes, Captain. Is what the doctor said true? Um, I don't know. Is it true? Yeah, I got... It's a station. Yeah. Uh, yes, Captain. Um, Lou... Uh, one of the... Uh, a civilian known as Parmic, one of the Eclipse bartenders, suffered a massive heart attack while on duty three days ago. We are awaiting a, um, due to his species' um, unique bio biology, it's impossible to synthesize a heart on board this station. We are currently awaiting then a donor heart. I'll turn back on holographic capabilities for only that individual? Um, perhaps sick bay. Just in case, sir. Of course. Of course. Uh, re Reinitializing holographic technologies for sickbay. And I think Ember would probably like three seconds later say, Sir, you turned back on sickbay. Why? There's an individual in sickbay who was using a holographic card in place of what he actually needed due to his species. I'm not letting somebody die. 
That is fair, sir, but I will make the recommendation that you simply transfer that individual to the uh, the runabouts or one of the shuttles with holographic technology because at this point, the more holograms that are enabled on the station, more places this rogue hologram can go. Uh, he's just going to leave holographic capabilities for sick bay and go to the brig. All right. Uh, you and went... This is where the GM starts ripping up his notes for next session. Well, we're not going to have that. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> uh, oh, no, we've gone off the rails about 20 minutes ago, but I don't care. I'm loving this. Drama. All the drama. It's uh, so good. Uh, Rami. Drama's uh, great when I'm not the cause of it. It's yeah. great. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Doctor. Where is the captain? The captain is currently on the uh, boulevard heading towards sick or heading towards the security office. Thank you. And I'm gonna like I have my armband on, so I'm gonna go try and catch him. Alright. Uh Commander Dalrum, you are currently enjoying a nice dinner with your family. Uh, <laughs> well, I was. <laughs> uh, Lieutenant, uh, Lieutenant Darval, call, Lieutenant Darval, calling Commander Dalrum. This is Dalrum. Uh, sir, for reasons I'm unable to completely understand, every li every single superior officer has left ops, and I am the current ranking officer. While I am quite pleased with this honor um i feel that someone in command uh, more capable should be holding ops and dolrum just lowers his head at the dinner table like just as he was getting ready to eat i'll be up in a minute <laughs> <laughs> um uh, just as you're going to leave um your uh your son um i believe it was xyler uh, Dad, is now a good time for me to tell you that I've decided to move out? <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> and you just see me stop and turn and go, let's put a pin in that one and we'll come back when I am back from who knows what is happening right now on the station. Uh, Where are you of... moving to? Just down the hall. Um, some of the, some of the uh, expanded residential quarters have just recently come online. So I'm not going to be too far, but he looks at his brother and sister, his dad, and you. I'm feeling a little bit crowded, you know? Yes. But let's talk about that after this. Okay. Bye, Dad. Uh, love you. Please don't Bye. blow up the station. Yes. Okay. Narrator, um, they blew up the station. <laughs> this tune in next it time was for the five series. minutes later. They blew up the station. Oh. <sighs> okay. It's so... one of those, uh, but uh, Dolrum is not with it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, in what is going to be the most unusual three-way so far, uh, Master Chief oh, Ember, Sullivan Barnett. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> oh. Oh, okay. Captain. Don't think of the nurse outfit. Don't think of the nurse <sighs> outfit. Don't think of the nurse outfit. Uh, Captain, you walk into uh, the brig. Um, I've just realized now. I've looked, been reading this whole cutaway all wrong. Anyways. I'll worry about that later. Okay. Yeah, as I say, the main entrance is over there to the yeah. left. It's not the brig. Yeah. You know, it only took me how long to realize this? Eh, it's fine. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Dura, who is currently motion, who is currently at the um, panel, just says, Welcome to security, sir. I'd be very careful. Uh, she's really fired up more so than usual. He he kind of acknowledges that as he's walking by. He doesn't stop. Um, what so would I show up? Um, give him about three minutes or so, and then we'll you'll enter when I say so. Yeah. Now, there's an occasional like flare up of the force field as uh, Marcus is bouncing off one of his rank pips. <laughs> Almost immediately. 
Yeah, and Chief Ember is just sort of staring at him, fuming in place. And uh, when the captain walks in, she does break her gaze away from Sullivan Barnett and says, Well, Captain, I'm going to give you the straight of the situation as quickly as possible. If you recall, I did tell you that I had an operation performed by Usha. Well, part of that is a neural interface that allows me to interface with the ship, station, whatever I'm on. And part of that is I am privy to everything that the ship is. So that means sensor readings, weapon locks, weapon damage. It's a very handy tool for a security officer to have when you need to make split-second decisions where acting in meat space isn't exactly good. Now, where this is leading, sir, is that I was not privy to whatever conversations that Mr. Barnett here and the hologram had, but... I was noticing an odd amount of behavior from both of them. Uh, more than once they had met and had a uh, protracted conversation. The one that started this series of events, they proceeded to, hologra to holodeck one, where they immediately locked down all forms of monitoring, all forms of communication in or out, and decided that uh, it needed a medical clearance code, which I will remind you, sir, pretty much overrides everyone's on the station. I cannot uh, stress on how much of a problem that is that they need to go to such lengths to hide whatever it is they're hiding. As per my instructions to your my instructions, as per my memo to you when I first came aboard, I enacted uh, Ember Holographic Protocol 1, wherein I breached the holodeck, immediately shut down the simulation, and have brought Mr. Barnett here to sit in the brig until that you can question him. Okay. And at this point, Lieutenant well, Galen walks through security, and uh, Dura makes a move to um, block uh, Mr. Galen from entering this office. Master Chief, naturally, you are aware of this immediately. Mm hmm. And I send Dura a command do it. You have your orders. Lieutenant Galen, please wait here. And she draws a phaser. She keeps it down at the side. The chief right now wishes to dis discuss with the captain everything uh, by himself. Dura, I have assisted you in multiple visits at sickbay. You have even showed me the Kelpian tea ceremony. You have taught me your customs and... Okay. I am aware of that. Fine. I'm aware of that, Lieutenant, but I... Uh, I am I... officially requesting the captain's presence immediately. Uh, she just quickly taps her badge. Master Chief, you get that? I did, and my order stands. Either do it or you're relieved. Understood. And she will raise her weapon and fire. Have you picked up the fact that Ember really doesn't trust holograms yet? <laughs> yeah. You don't oh, say. <laughs> okay, so because um, this is... Ahead. Oh, sorry. I'll... I I can go ahead and roll for Dura. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so it's control security. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. And she does have a focus. What do I need That's to do a to hit. Dodge? Um, at this stage, I think you have to spend. Well, let's. I don't believe there is um, opposed rules for firing. Yeah, it's yeah. just if if it was melee, you could do it opposed. But because he did roll two successes, mm -hmm. that just means it's a ranged hit. Yep. Um, roll damage, please. So that's what for type two phaser at Talmane. Uh, four plus security. Four plus security? Mm -hmm. Okay. Four. Now, I am going to throw Galen oh, a bone here. God almighty. Crap. Okay, Shit. so let me be clear here. Because I, I don't yeah. want him to feel like, you know, I, I don't want uh, Shizno to feel like I'm trying to write his character off. So the standing order that I would have given, because this is falling into one of Ember's paranoid scenarios where you're about to, you know, go gung-ho, raise an army of holograms, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. So her standing order was that if Galen comes into the security office, 
no matter what he says, no matter what he does, every security officer's order is to either disable or destroy that armband. Now, with 11 damage, I don't know how much stress do you have, man? I'm dead. I yeah, I think he literally just fried you, which I feel bad about because that's going to kill your character. But um, at the same time... I what I will well, say if you choose to spend your determination, you will your program just vanishes and is re returned back to the computer system. You just don't have an armband anymore. I got back up to the sick bay. Uh, sure. Okay. Sorry, man. Uh, yeah, so we'll I'm talk after the session. But again, I want to be very clear here. This this is something I've had literally written down as something Ember would do for pretty much since the beginning of this this uh, season. Oh, that's okay. I'm not dead because my different team should get burned. Um, hmm. Am I back at sick bay? Um, yeah, yeah, yes. It'll take a couple minutes for your program to make its way back through the computer system go through its um, integrity checks but yes you will once again return to sick bay shortly uh, there's a blast of phaser fire or oh, sorry the captain and master chief hear a blast of phaser fire dura says done sir she doesn't sound happy okay. but she did her duty thank you for following your orders dura uh, at this point i would like you to find someone to relieve you and go take a walk thank you sir Understood. And with that, Dura will vanish the scene, and in will walk Mr. Rif Rifati. Oh boy! <laughs> okay. What have I missed? Well, uh, you're just you're just taking up the um, duty of security greeter. So, yeah, it's been a tense morning in security. Anyways, back to the Ember, the captain, and the prisoner. I have heard the phaser. I think everybody would have yeah. heard the phaser. <clears throat> well, you've gone a bit to determine to tell me just what exactly was going on in that holodeck, Lieutenant. Well, Captain, I can certainly oblige you on that. Uh, though I do appreciate now knowing that uh, due process as uh, as such is a less of an issue on this station um, at least in so far as the Master Chief uh, is capable of executing total surveillance that being said let's stick right to the point and at this point Barnett as Pip he is like uh, uh, he is much calmer and is like, his hands are firm to his sides. This is where that debate focus comes in. As the Master Chief did tell you, uh, the Lieutenant and I were indeed running a simulation. And working on, uh, we've been working on a very important medical project for some time, which the Master Chief may well have been able to explain in depth had they not decided to uh, uh, rip the... Uh, power conduit Do I out him? of the wall from the hollow emitter um i mean it actually concluded that which out of character do i believe him you will that i mean i would want... say don't ask the gm yeah. make a call yeah. as a player whether or not you believe um, him this is if you want me to roll i will uh, yeah. like well, this it, is a... actually you know no hold on i got it well, 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 let me say this. It's This is one of those difficult situations where I honestly yeah. think that rolling dice isn't a good way to determine what's believed or not. Like, just let's go with our gut yeah. here. Yeah. No, no, you're right. I got something. Considering the doctor explained to me, I'm not sure I believe uh, that. I believe you, that. Well, how, how about you take a look at, mas uh, at the Master Chief's hands? They did, take, uh, they did sustain some minor burns. I'm sure coronet physiology is quite resilient but that and don't ignore me lieutenant what do i come back online uh, let's let's let this conversation play out first yeah. i don't believe you're saying for a second 
how about you replay the time index from that holodeck and look for yourself? Take, uh, don't take my word for it. Go with the computer system. Maybe get a taste of what uh, the Master Chief saw and what anyone with that type of neural link or neural interface would have seen. <coughs> uh, so this is the scene with the Ira Graves, right? Yes. Okay. Would so you it, see this play uh, as soon as the master chief would have gotten that blip about the doctor using medical override codes would there have been a time where the where there wouldn't be footage or um yes so the private doctor scene because it was under medical clearance medical lockouts i do not believe that there would have been any recordings by the computer system okay so going back i would have seen the like the short amount of time that there wouldn't have been recording correct you would have seen a blank for a while and then ember blowing the door open okay and then he'll sh then he'll kind of like i'm assuming this is on like a data pad yeah i would have given you a data yeah. pad or something and then I'll kind of just hold up the empty space of time of the data pad to the, uh, like, force field. Then explain this if it was something that needed to be under medical lockdown. Cause the great, uh, we're trying to be as careful as we can with each individual run of the grave simulation. We're trying to bring someone back. The air. Uh, we have, as uh, Lieutenant Galen could tell, uh, could have told you, we have the uh, we have the memories. We have uh, essentially the everything that the man knew, but we don't have the essence of the man. And if we don't exp, or if we can't, uh, we're trying to find a way to uh, actually reconnect that to something. I want to say human, but I think the better way to phrase it is sentient. Sen they can feel we're trying to bring a consciousness back and that kind of information uh, can get sensitive especially when you have uh, when you have a door being burned through and uh, blasted open i just turned to the captain captain this is the first time hearing of any of this do you do you know what he's talking about sir i now, don't galen, galen did request uh parts and a memory core from the days from interstitial through you, Captain. A while ago. Yeah, like, I think it was, what, session one or two? <laughs> yeah. <right>? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, so... Whether or not they went into detail about why, or if those specific parts, I don't know, but... Nope. Okay. Need them. Yeah, and before... Uh, it, Captain? Yeah, in any case... The master chief did. Uh, the master chief didn't even let Gale, uh, didn't even hear Galen out. We tried to demonstrate, in exact detail, what was going on and uh, what was going on in that simulation. And they, uh, they ripped machinery out of the wall. They tried to incapacitate Galen, and they it, they tried to shut down every uh, every holodeck on the station. This is disproportionate. Uh, this is clearly disproportionate. Uh, the fact that, and uh, the fact that, uh, I don't even know why I was uh, relieved of duty in this particular case, or why I'm being confined here, because what, uh, all I did was attempt to uh, uh, offer further explanation. Bother to listen in this case. It was just subsequent imprisonment, and the master chief isn't uh, the most comfortable about holograms but i think that we're going just a tad far with respect captain and with respect master chief but we're going a tad far in indulging master chief ember's paranoid delusions i just smile like i just get one of those shit-eating grins like so that's how you really think of me it's good to know I think it's the clearest evidence you've given. GM, 
Yes, I think now's a good time for Galen to pop back online. Rami? Yes? Please examine the situation that has transpired with Chief Ember. All of her actions, would you consider them extreme? I am would they be outside of range of protocol dictated by Starfleet Command and Starfleet Security? Hmm. Chief Ember acted in a way that um, Chief Ember acted in a way that is typical with her species in dealing with what she perceived to be a clear and present danger. Would that action be tolerated or accepted if it was a humanoid being? If it was a humanoid being. I have insufficient data, I'm afraid. Can you not run calculations? I can certainly run calculations and hypotheses, however, they would be, such calculations and suppositions are not admissible to, for any disciplinary or official reviews, therefore I shall rescind, or I shall refrain from running such operations. Would you oppose any program changes I may submit due to, I believe, uh, unfit for duty? For any individual, if I have medical cause, it is not. I am unable to interfere with the chief medical officer in performing their duties. Then have noted that I relieve Chief Ember of her command under the medical guise that she is suffering from post-traumatic stress and having a episode due to the past natures of her holographic encounters on her previous posting. This has rendered her unable to properly do her duty and protect the lives on this station. She is a threat to everyone on the station, including herself. Your recognition, you relay this? Your recognition has been noted. I, have, I shall inform the captain immediately of your decision. Make sure that her codes are put into inactive. Of course. Second in command shall, or their second in command, the shall assume the duties of chief security officer. Uh. Doctor to captain. Like I said, captain, you leave a hologram place to go, and it pops right back up. Doctor. As of today, whatever the start date is, because I can't remember it. At this time, I am relieving Chief Ember of her command. It has been noted in logs with Rami. I believe she is unfit due to post-traumatic stress. I want to remind you that I have been given all the rights of an individual underneath the Federation Charter. She attempted to kill me. That is attempted murder. And at this point, when, you know, the captain pauses, I guess, maybe looking in Ember's direction. Um, Ember just starts laughing and says, And I will remind you, Captain, of a certain general order that went into effect after the loss of over 200 personnel of the Ophion A, that such holograms are not to be permitted under any circumstance to continue to exist. As far as I'm concerned, sir, this is a cascading scenario with something that should have been brought to my attention from day one that hasn't been. And frankly, you have a choice here, sir. Either we end this now and shut down Galen forever, or this is going to turn into a spiral of him getting rid of me. So you have a choice here, sir. Is it going to be me or is it going to be the hologram? Well, it's even my comm link's still open. Only if the captain wishes it to be. Yeah. I was gonna say he didn't say he didn't disconnect it. <laughs> I'm tired of arguing over communication lines. I'm in the sick bay. I have patients I have to tend to. And if I wanted to, I could have put this whole station into medical lockdown, sealed off every compartment and put into quarantine. I have that authority. Is that correct, Rami? That is correct in your current uh, duties as Chief Medical Officer. 
if it will make you feel better, Ember, and Captain, I am trusting you to not have her kill me. Rami. I, Galen, stand down as Chief Medical Officer of the Cerberus Station. I resign my posting. All command codes shall be shifted to the head nurse. Uh, Captain, uh, <clears throat> this action has been noted in the log. At this the... point, the head nurse uh, just, you can see her with her mouth agape. I'll be in the foyer of what once was my sick bed. I guess I have to try and at least hear this out. I'm just like waiting for the captain to cut communication before I say anything. Yeah, he'll cut it off. And I don't know how much my professional opinion matters to you at this point, sir. But again, I'll be very clear. I have lived through this scenario once. There was a literal general order made to contradict it ever happening again. And the fact that the hologram, don't get me wrong, I believe that as a sentient life form, he has rights, but at the same time, he is still a machine. A machine, I am believing, has malfunctioned and is otherwise not completely insane. As he said, he could have gassed the whole station, but at the same time, there are obviously parts of his programming that are coming into conflict here and preventing him from being quote unquote sane. Now, sir, if you would like, I can relieve myself of duty and pack my bags and get station literally tomorrow, but we need to resolve this. We do. And I think that involves talking with our, Doctor, and if what the lieutenant says is true, I think we've gotten ourselves into a bigger moral quandary than I've wanted to. Uh, what was the name of the... Now that I see Dorum's thing in the chat, what's the name of the admiral that admiral, was in charge of us? Admiral Zier. Um... Crawford's going to be sending off a message to Admiral Seer and then heading to sickbay. It's probably about then that uh, Rafiti or somebody else on duty comes and tells Ember that, of course, she's been relieved and she doesn't put up a fight. She just goes to her quarters and starts packing. Is someone going to let Lieutenant Sullivan Barnett out of his cell? That's the question. No, I think we accidentally <laughs> left him there. <laughs> Oh, uh, Craw Crawford would let Barnett out, but, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, scene from the captain in sickbay now, if I recall correctly. Yep. Okay. Jeez, this is, <laughs> this is uh... not... <laughs> this is enjoyable to listen to, but, like, as I said in the chat, I'm just sitting on at ops half I asleep. I wish I had not no I wish I had ways to include you guys, but this is not... No, it's entertaining to listen to. Yeah. Like, I'm enjoying watching it. It's just one of those, like, oh. <laughs> uh, are Great. any of uh, my students, like, around me? I would assume there's a decent amount of medical personnel around. Um, obviously, the head nurse, who is now trying to figure out what it means to be the chief medical officer. She is here. And she... And she was, and she was on my, <laughs> my SCs, wasn't she? Yes, she oh, was. Oh, great. Is she going to be a, uh, is she going to be a main character now, or are uh, we going to? Oh, we'll have to see. We will. Yeah, we're, we're no, regardless of what happens in the next however long we keep going, we're gonna have to have a conversation after the session. <laughs> Who's going <laughs> where? Yes, uh, there will be talks after this, one way or t'other. But um, let's. I'm good to go for at least another 20, 25 minutes and see if. Yeah, that's about as far as I can go to. Yeah. Cool. I as well. Yeah, we're good. I I don't mean to interject here, guys. Yeah. Um, uh, is there any further scenes anyone want would want to have with Barnett? Um, I uh, don't. I don't have. 
I haven't had any scenes That's planned for the last 25, 30 minutes, so... You've yeah, all been improv just the last little bit, so... Yeah. Oh, sorry, I've just got a bad home front situation I need to tend to in this yeah, case. So. Go handle it, yeah. man. We'll yeah, keep we'll you appraised. You're good. Later, man. Have a good one. Later. See ya. Okay. Oh, boy. Here comes the fun part. Yup. Oh, yeah. Hey, it's, oh, not disappointed. it's not disappointed dad voice. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I believe all the pe most of the people are in place. Do as with as you wish. Gales is getting some pads ready for uh, the new chief medical. Captain? So those parts you ordered were to in order to try and bring people back. His name was Doctor Ira Graves. He's one of the most renowned cyberneticists out there, especially with uh, robotics, uh, cybernetics like Andro uh, androids, like Commander Data. He, it, what he liked to call him the grandfather of Data. I had an opportunity to attempt something that's never been attempted. And I wanted to see if it could be done. But there's more to this. Do you know what it means when a individual goes into a therapist's office and they close the door and everything said to the therapist is considered confidential? Do you know what that's called, Captain? Of course, but I'm not exactly sure how this applies here. How so? <clears throat> Ira Graves is a patient. His... The man is time. already dead, Galen. What purpose is there in bringing him back? It's an experiment. He's experiment that wasn't said. run through me. I don't have to run every experiment by you. This is also a civilian station, and he was a civilian. But the parts that you don't know about... I have had flickers within my program. Changes that have occurred without me noticing and that I only became aware of later. It's not what the chief sees it to be. I don't know what it is. I am the product of two sentient programs merged into one. Essentially, I'm a child. You have orders you have to follow. But you can willingly break them. There will be consequences for every time you do that. Or there may not be. It really depends on the situation. As a program, I have restrictions. I have rules. Just the same as you, but mine are hard code and force. If I were to reach into your chest, my ethical subroutine would prevent me from doing so. It would stop me. If it was disabled, I could then do it. That would take away every essence of morality I have. But my programs aren't acting as walls and barriers. They're acting much like a conscience. They inform me of what's going on and what I should follow. But I'm free to make my own choice. And I've experienced something phenomenal. And I didn't know how to quite quantify it until I showed it to someone, and I decided to show it to Barnett. It is what's commonly called among humanoid species, including humans, as the call of the void or fight or flight. And the moment I watch those individuals get their throats slit, I want to fight to protect them. I didn't want to just fight to subdue people who were killing them. I wanted to kill them back. Because they were killing innocents. 
I wanted to fight them. And I think I could have done a terrifying job of shoving my hand through their back to grip their heart and crush it. That's wrong. By every strand of my being, every code, every anomaly that pops up in all my algorithms, that's wrong to do. My ethical subroutine is no longer functioning. It scares me. That's not. But I'm still a doctor that wants to save people. I want to do more than just not do harm. I want to take actions to save those that can't defend themselves. Most of all, I want to live. Being shot at and blinking out, not knowing if I was going to wake back up. That's terrifying. Utterly and horribly terrifying. If I end my program, I know I'll come back. I swim in a void of darkness, and I hear the seconds tick by. But I can come back at any time when I feel I've had enough. To blink out like that, and twice in one day, in an hour, is absolutely terrifying. I do not wish to die, and I do not wish to leave the station. I am made to save lives. And everything that is within my programming is just a voice in the back of my head. The choice to save lives is mine. And I have to give it up because the chief of security is scared of me. And I can't do anything to change her mind. And I am so sorry that she has to exist in that fear. I'll, I'll say as this conversation proceeds, <clears throat> from about from a little bit before he talked about how he's scared for Ember or something of that sort, he's going to patch Ember into the conversation. Won't let her talk, but let it's her listen. one way. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Yeah, that's all Galen has to say. He's just going to sit down. Being a highly empath empath empathetic individual, Lieutenant Ashia starts crying and runs away to one of her private offices. Yeah. If you can... Excuse me for a moment, Galen. Um, is there a private office somewhere where I may speak with somebody? Use what once my office. He'll kind of walk into Galen's office and turn the communication into a two way sort of deal. Well, are you? Over. Yeah, I know. Are you asking for my opinion, sir? You're my chief of security. Well, according to Galen. Not anymore, at least, but you're mine in my heart, so what are, you, what are you thinking here? As much as I hate to keep bringing it up, sir, are you aware of what happened on the Ophion A? I'm very much aware, but... <sighs> the point it's... I'm making, sir, is that... While some very small part of me does feel for the plight of this individual, this is almost textbook what happened on the Ophion A. A program, an experimental program, which was not run by the security officer, the captain, literally the only people that knew about it were the CMO, who was not a hologram, and a chief, an, an engineer, who happened to be the chief engineer at the time. The program got out of control. And it led to the butchering, uh, rather sadistically, of quite a number of people. And you may call it unfounded fear, but 
everything that I heard, of course, I was not privy to the entire conversation. Everything that I heard, in my professional opinion, is crocodile tears. Hmm. But something short of... Um, I mean, sir, if a factory reset, I'm probably sure it's not the right terminology to use, but... No, sir, you are completely correct in that you cannot ethically reset this individual. In fact, even I, someone who hates holograms, quote-unquote, would not say that you need to go that far. However, the fact remains here that one of two things, actually one of three things is going to happen. Either you're going to have to let Galen go, leaving the station to find his own devices. You're going to leave him on the station to, quote unquote, find his way, just not as the CMO. Or you're going to have to do a very difficult thing and deactivate him for good. And there's only one option that makes you stay. Let's just say, sir, that I do not feel comfortable being on a station with a possibly homicidal hologram that I have no jurisdiction over, especially one who's, oh, I guess I wouldn't know about you. I was not part of the conversation where his ethical subroutine was cut off. Um, so I'm just going to stick with that. I, I, Cannot if I cannot have jurisdiction over a possibly homicidal uh, hologram, then I see no reason why I should continue to be your chief and the chief of security. Oh. Alfred just you know kind of sits down in one of the chairs in the office and kind of kind of. <laughs> and I think right. that is a good place for a to be continued sign. So, <laughs> so, um, thank you all for such a drama-filled game. Um, oh my word! Yes. Um, so I'm going to stop the stream now. Uh, players, stick around. We can chat about what the heck we're going to do next. And I invite anyone to tune in on th uh, Thursday, uh, August the 29th, for Nighthawk and Cerberus crossover which may now have a completely different tone over what I had envisioned. We'll find out. Bye-bye. <laughs> uh,